Welcome back, everybody. It is week three, and it's time to get this party started right now. The 5-0 and London Spitfire. Boston's trying to climb up the leaderboard. Burek on the back line, has been spotted. Trade Casper does the job. There's the opening for Boston. It is burning. Boston uprising. They've done it. 3-2. Like that. Fusion against the 4-0 NYXL. I've been looking forward to this one. This is happening! You better believe it! Philadelphia Fusion! Massive upset! Ah! It's our two LA teams going toe-to-toe. -to -toe. It's gonna be Hydration, the last gladiator on the point! Valiant will win the battle for Los Angeles in a 3-2 reverse sweep. Wow! This is the most important match thus far. It's one of those pinch me moments. Whoever wins this is the best team in the Overwatch. Think so. They are taking the fight for soul. No resurrect possible, especially not when you're dead. And they are the new kings of Overwatch League. New York Excel, they have done it. This is exactly where Dallas Fuel has to turn it around. And they've done it. They've broken the streak. They've got a win to their names. Keep the party, guys. Thank you very much. For that's it. It's four four zeros in a row for the Houston Outlaws. It has been a ridiculous week, and it only gets better from here. Welcome back to the Overwatch League, everybody. It is week four, and the playoff race is just starting to heat up here in stage one. Uh, welcome back to the desk. I'm your host, Chris Puckett, once again. And already we have seen some insane matches throughout the regular season. This week, it gets even better. And to bring you the action today, I've got the full desk. We got two Brits and a Swiss. We got Bren, we got Sideshow, and of course, Zoe is back with us. Guys, great match coming into the final two weeks. What are you looking forward to this week, friend? Yeah, for me personally, it's got to be that London Soul matchup, Ooh. right? That's a big one, to be honest. It's got the whole te the home team for me, at least, the London squad coming up against Soul Dynasty, and it's going to be that battle to see if they can one up each other. Now, Soul have already dropped to the NYXL, and there's a chance that they drop there to uh, to London as well, and then they face the Houston Outlaws. And the Houston at the moment are on a 16 and 0 record. That could be an absolute cracker of a game. They so definitely have a chance. Big in. battles in the big three. Soy, who are you keeping your eyes on this week? Oh, for me, it's got to be the first game. Valiant going up against the Fusion. Fusion, a bit of a dark horse with mixed results. And Valiant finally showing some cracks in the armor. So I think this is going to be a very exciting match. I was expecting people to put their hands together when they heard the words Valiant, LA. Represent the home squad. Come on now. Let's get into the league standings. Here's where we're at after three weeks of play. At the top, it's the Dynasty. It's the Excel and Spitfire all at five and one. Right behind them, though, it's the Houston Outlaws, Valiant, and the Fusion. While we still have squads like the Gladiator Shock and Uprising trying to climb in the standings. But today, all of our focus is on that middle pack, four through six. And we get a chance to watch the Valiant take on the Fusion, our first fight of the day. A little bit later, it's the Mayhem taking on the Gladiators. And we close it out with a bang as the Outlaws look to improve to five and two against the San Francisco Shock. Yeah, it's going to be a crazy game, actually, because it's got so many implications. Houston Outlaws versus Shock. It's going to be a good one. Well, it's time to get this game started. Are you guys ready for our first match of the day? Please put your hands together, clap those thunder sticks as we welcome our first squad of the week. It's the LA Valiant. No smiles from LA. They are strictly business today, and they're coming off big wins over Florida and the Gladiators in week three. But they're pushed to a fifth match in the battle for LA. Yeah, this is still a huge for the LA Valiant. They haven't yet shown us really whether they are for real or not as a genuine top team. They're very consistent. They look good when they play. They beat all the teams in the middle of the pack, but they haven't had that big upset against any of the teams above them yet. And they've struggled a little bit recently, especially against the LA Gladiators. <laughs> we were worried for this squad. Those are not boos. Those are soon. <laughs> uh, we are a little bit worried for the Valiant as they went up against the Gladiators because they dropped the first two games. Did that highlight any weaknesses for the squad? Oh, you know what? I talked to their coach, Coddleson. He said that they were just insanely lazy for the first half. And they were just not on. Gladiators play tight, they play coordinated, but thankfully they used the halftime well uh, to have some serious discussions. They bounced back right after, and it just seemed a little bit of a trend for them to have those slow starts. We already saw them starting a game at 2-0 against the London Spitfire. 
Brent, big change here today. Unko out, Verbo is in for the first game. This is super interesting because this is something we haven't really seen before. And I honestly, so many questions now raised in my mind. Is where is this team going to stand now that they're running, not running Unko and Verbo is in the place running that Mercy, presumably, because Kareev is really the only one who can play the Zenyatta. Once the heart of Immortals, Verbo back in the starting lineup for the Valiant today, but it's now time to introduce their opponent. Please show some brotherly love for the Philadelphia Fusion. Just like the Valiant, the Fusion entered this matchup with a 4-2 record, and they went to Game 5 twice last week, walking away with wins over both Shanghai and the New York XL. Bren, how did they hand New York their first loss of the season? Uh, it's got to be Shadowburn and Carpe, right? The two DPS duos. We were talking about them uh, for so long in, in these games because they had such a massive impact, that clutch potential. The amount of plays they were making was absolutely ridiculous keeping them in the game against New York XL. We saw plenty of times where Carpe was hitting off pulse bombs onto the supports, getting crucial picks at crucial times, and then Shadowburn clutching it out on the Genji time and time again. For me, the theme of this match, again, is going to be consistency because Philadelphia Fusion have had ups and they have had downs. And when they're, when they're at their heights, they look like they can beat almost anybody. And they did, they beat NYXL. But when they're at the lows, they look very sloppy, very messy. And so I don't know which Philadelphia Fusion is going to turn up today. And against the LA Valley, you've got to be clean, you've got to be crisp. Yeah, and I did talk to them uh, about their match against the Shanghai Dragons, which went all the way to map five. And they did say that they wanted to give every player some play time. They haven't had much uh, of it like throughout the last few games. And they were very confident when the game started. And I mean, looking at the result, they had a right to do so. However, they got a little bit too confident. They also, for map three and four, switched in Hotba as well as they fly Hotba once again in the... Um, and the mix there for Poco. Today. Yeah. Very interesting. Poco on the bench. Something we didn't expect after some incredible performances early on in the regular season. Let's talk about the importance of this match. As we showed you, these teams are in the hunt really for fourth place. You got three teams at five and one, but each team here today has a chance to pick up their first win or their fifth win. Bren, talk to me about these implications for the squads. Yeah, this is huge implications because this is the battle for fourth place right now between these two teams. It, both of these teams are desperate to win this and get as many map wins under their belt as well alongside it. These map wins are now coming in uh, more and more important as the season's going on because it's really starting to test them where they place in these leagues. Once they win this, coming into this match, whatever team wins this, now it's going to be decided between basically hairs whether or not they take this with these map wins. That map count is going to be so important today. And I talked to Philly backstage. He's like, is there any chance you guys get a clean 4-0 catch up in the rankings? They're like, no, nah, this is going to be a tight series. <laughs> so let's talk about the map pool and why it's going to be so tight. Sideshow, as you look at our first four maps, who do you think has the edge here? Yeah, the map pool is actually incredibly interesting between these two teams because they have similar styles and similar strengths. But when we start out and we're looking at Numbani, the difference is fairly large. The LA Valiant have had good performances there. Philadelphia are actually Northern 3, which is super strange for them. They move over onto Anubis, and both of these two teams have had excellent performances on Anubis so far. They are both unbeaten. And the crazy thing is that when we look at Philadelphia Fusion, they managed to beat the New York Excelsior on this map. And the NYXL are absolutely no slouches on these assault maps. They are fantastic at them. So to be able to take away Anubis from NYXL and then Dorado, which is going to be our final map, Philadelphia might have the slight edge here in terms of those close maps, but Numbani should be a great starting point here for the Valley. So let's talk about the players that are going to have a massive impact on today's game. Who is going to be the key to victory for each squad? I think we have to look at the Tracer battle for this very matchup. It's going to be soon going up against Carpe. And it's going to be interesting because if we're looking at the stats from those two guys, they look incredible similarly. Uh, they, they're very evenly matched. However, if we're looking at the individual player, Carpe just showed us a deeper hero pool. I know that if he is not going to win those Tracer battles against soon, he has ways to actually play something else and make it work with his team. Whereas from soon himself, we haven't seen that versatility. We saw him performing good on Widowmaker and great on Tracer as always. I'd love to see Carpe back on that McCree. He was putting on a show for us last battle. It's time though to get into our official predictions. As he saw on Watchpoint, Monty's going Valiant. Meanwhile, Dylan, Mr. X, are going with the Philadelphia Fusions. Let's start down at the end here. Zoe, kick us off. Who are you going with today? Oh, man. <laughs> I, I think I have to go with the Fusion. Go I think Fusion. it's the, I go Fusion. I'm sorry. Okay. But I do think, I 
do think because they have their complete lineup, we don't have Unko, and I don't know how Valiant is going to play with Verbo. That's too big of a question mark because Unko has been too much of an impact for the Valiant. So I think this is something I can't ignore, and I do think the Fusion have the edge. Major point right there. Support so crucial to the meta right now. Bren, who are you going with? Uh, it's going to be very, very close between these two teams, but I am also drifting over to the Fusion. Uh, it's Yeah, I know. It's ridiculous, right? I was so set on Valiant to win this one until I saw that support switch up. That's actually fun throw me completely off tilt here and I've just gone last minute gone with my gut I'm going with fusion sideshow any faith in the hometown squad are you gonna make these people happy I am I mean <laughs> I'm going with the LA Valiant to win this one there it is I, I just want to pass this to the crowd you know I do have some uh, idea of intellectual integrity but, but, but for the LA Valiant, I agree that the support switch up is kind of concerning for them. We still need to see how that plays out. But overall, when you look at how these two teams have performed, Philadelphia Fusion have too much inconsistency in their dive play, and LA Valiant have been playing quite a nice, uh, slick dive. So as long as they can keep that up with Verbo still in the mix, and I think that they can switch it out fairly e easily, then LA Valiant all the way. All right, Unko is going to be out for the Valiant today. We'll see what is Verbo going to play in our first game as we send it over to our casters. It's going to be Monty and Doa as we head into Numadi. Hey guys, we are ready to get things started. LA Valiant versus Philadelphia Fusion here to kick off week four already of the Overwatch League. This has been moving fast, hasn't it? And now we're into playoff implications. Obviously, yeah. the winner of this match has significantly better odds of heading into the stage one playoffs. The loser, uh, they really will hurt them. Their odds will dwindle down, and yeah. we are unlikely to see them towards the end of this stage competing for a top three slot. I, by the way, in terms of predictions, yes. it is not fair that the desk gets to see start, starting lineups yeah. if we don't. Can we no discuss kidding. that? Go ahead. <laughs> we don't get to see the starting lineups, guys. That's right. We have they, to go into this blind. That's right. We have to go into it totally blind. That said, yeah. I still think the Valiant Which... are going to take this. And a win on Numbani, I think, is going to start things off. Because sure. as Sideshow mentioned, We've seen the fusion drop every Numbani so far. I haven't been impressed a lot of times with their Widow and Junkrat defense. I think it's been a little bit weird. Meanwhile, we've seen pretty standard stuff from the side of the Valiant. Uh, wow. A lot of Soldier and Tracer on defense. You know, though, Monty, I feel like because we have to make those predictions with only the data we have from the previous week and not seeing the lineups, that just makes us more bold, more daring, more admirable. <laughs> we get more points. Dare I say, <laughs> more handsome. <laughs> That's right. More handsome? Maybe. That's I don't know. The lack of knowledge definitely makes you more handsome. <laughs> hey, it works for a lot of people right now. That's kind of all right. <laughs> Valiant versus Fusion. Here we go. It's going to be the LA Valiant on attack. Philadelphia Fusion defending. And, you know, we have a lot of personal pride on the line in this match. I predicted Fusion to win. You predicted Valiant to win. Again, those are bold predictions, but I feel like we both had great points. Uh, we did, <laughs> we did. On our, on our yeah. next little turn on watch point. It will be, looks like a dive composition coming out on defense though, from the Philadelphia Fusion with the inclusion of Ana. Yeah. Or Boombox. Remember guys, well, we are not on the patch that dropped yesterday. We will move to that patch, just to be totally clear. With the Junkrat and Mercy changes, we'll be moving to that after stage one completes. Yeah. So, so a little bit more resing action for all you resurrection lovers out there. <laughs> resurrection enthusiasts. Resurrection <laughs> enthusiasts. That's right. That's what they're. That's what we call them. Here we go. LA Valiant on the attack as the doors open. Let's see what they can do. Playoff hopes on the line in a big way for these teams. And there's Verbo. Kicking it for Unko instead today on that Mercy. That's really interesting. Now, when Verbo was in the lineup, we thought, hey, maybe this guy is going to be playing some sort of Lucio focus composition. Yeah. But instead, they're going back to their standard Valiant Soldier Tracer play that we've seen from them on attack and defense on this map previously. Now they've taken the high ground. Silk Thread pushed back a bit by Fraggy. Carpe goes down. He loses the 1v1 to soon on the side of that fight. And it looks like Valiant already exiting this oh, one. Yeah, they man. get out. Neptuno so low, too. Soon oh, playing in. a point right now. Man, Fraggy dies again early on. And 
That is going to be point A, just like that. Valiant plays it really smart, backs off just enough to draw Fusion out of position, and they will get this payload rolling real quick. And not only that, a late kill on the Carpe, too. More yep. movement through point B going to be possible. Soon, really, the hero of that matchup, like you said, winning the duel versus Carpe. Then he was capping the point while hiding behind the payload, and that actually baited Neptuno in. Soon nearly killed him and forced him off the point. So soon, we know him as a Tracer player who plays objectives, and that's what he's doing here. Uh, he's been a huge boon to this team since they've added him. He's showing it again here he's today. Not he's, on the side. he's got that pulse bomb ready to go here. He wants, okay. Yeah, I gotta get out of there. there. Go. Gonna pulse bomb the tanks instead. Uh, that's not gonna kill him though. You need to add a little bit more damage on it. Carpe right there to finish him off. Now Fusion goes in with the 6v5. This is their opportunity. Diving deep here. They gotta go back. Fraggy dies again. Fraggy dies with the nano boost on him too. I was gonna so. say, he was just so far away from everybody else. Uh, seemed he, like. he was focused extremely quickly to start out that that fight because with the nano boost on him it's going to be obviously more difficult to kill him by a significant margin some line of sight issues there with him and the healers too i think have to go back and watch that one again envy's got his ultimate ready to go on the diva the momentum hasn't really been stopped too much for the valiant yet yeah, and they're also poking in the back end. Verbo, Silk Thread, right. and Grieve are very far behind the payload right now and just trying to slowly poke while the tanks and soon are up on the objective itself. I think it's a smart way to play it. They know that Fusion loves to dive. Speaking of dive, Valiant going in. Fate right in there. And they've got Hotbow a little bit zoned off a little bit. Now Frankie comes in. He's going to pop that Primal Rage to stay alive. And there's the self-destruct. Envy ducking for cover right now. They're going to get back to the payload in a hurry. But Fraggy all on soon in that room. He's going to get him with the ultimate. And it's a 6v5. Is the res coming in? They're going to go and use the Valkyrie, it looks like, from Burbo. Now the self-destruct comes in for Envy. No kills. Burbo brings a couple members of his team back up. And there's a D-Mech on the hot, but Silk Threat coming in hot with the tactical visor. And that may be enough on the Shadow Burn on the Genji now trying to turn this one around. Uh, Shadow Burn coming in with the late Dragon Blade. Looks like they are going to repel the members of the LA Valley and right before they can take that point B. Yeah. Uh, goodbye, Neptuno. Or uh, rather, uh, Verbo. Uh, what are you, Mercy? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, that... Soon? Soon? That was a pretty big commitment by the Los Angeles Valley. Fate popped the Primal Rage to force out Boombox and Neptuno, so not yeah. a significant amount of healing coming in, but Shadow Bird, known for those clutch Dragon Blades, actually finishes out the necessary kills as it looked like the tide was turning against the fusion. You know, and that's one of fusion's greatest strengths, right? Where even if things look like they're starting to go poorly, you've got so many people on this team that can make huge individual plays that they often find themselves winning fights where they really should be. Yeah, they absolutely can. However, everybody uh -oh. coming in without ultimates right now. Kareev will take out Shadowburn to start the engagement. Yeah, headshot on the Genji will uh, finish him off early. Philly just trying to hold this one, playing a little bit safe. Now Shadowburn does get res by Neptuno, so he's back in action. And still, oh, okay. Zoning Fusion a little bit with that self-destruct. Frankie going down via the Pulse Bomb. This might be Valiant's moment here. Though Kareem does fall, as does Verbo. Shadowburn gets in there and kills both supports on his own. But the payload nearly there. Yeah, that was the proper play. Get it. The yeah. only ultimate up to start that engagement was Envy self-destruct. And they only have to move it a few meters to drive it home through point B. Drop that proactively and make some movement on the cart. Even though Shadowburn gets into the support line, can't actually finish things off. But that said, cost was pretty high. We're gonna have new, uh, Neptuno coming back with a Valkyrie. Verbo nearly there as well. Tracer yep. Battle gonna go on soon. Will lose it as he loses the mini health pack. A lot of ults on the Philly side here as they try to hold. Three minutes remaining in the attack run for LA Valiant right now. Zoom coming in, trying to do enough damage to build up that pulse bomb. One more time. Here comes a self-destruct. Does he get all the way? Yes, he does. In time, soon sneak around the back. He's nearly got that ultimate again. Ooh, goes after Boombox, but can't quite do the damage. Now he's got the pulse bomb. Soon being very aggressive here, but it's managed to pull Philly back a little bit. And Carpe just comes in and says, "You know what? I'm just going to go Mortal Combat on this guy and take him down." Yeah, a little bit of help there. Verbo will actively use the Valkyrie. Now, due to holding on to his, they know they have a big ultimate advantage right now. Two and a half minutes. If they space their ult right, they may be able just to hold this before they actually get to point C. Fraggy rezzed again as he uh, did drop in that fight. Still trying a little bit on his own. He's going to pop the attack visor. The Gendry reflect is down. Fraggy taken out early. 
not enough absorption from the defense matrix from Hotba. They do push him back a little bit. Frankie back in action once again. Seems like Neptuno always has a res for him. And here comes Shadowburn. Gets Silk Thread, gets Kareem, gets Furbo. That's three. And once again, Shadowburn saving the day. And he's going to get some more ult charge too, Doha. Yeah, wow, Already back up kills. at 25%. Shadowburn waited. His patience again prevailing. He manages to wait until both of those support ultimates are out before right. trying to. Uh, actually pull out the Dragon Blade and clean things up soon. Being cute right there, he actually got a few more meters on the payload. Well, the members of the fusion were milling around in front of it. I mean, uh, I'd love to see a stat on, like, meters snuck for the payload. Oh, I bet you soon. Oh, soon, soon is number ahead. one, I'm sure. Yeah, undoubtedly. Carpe rejoins his team here as they get ready for another push from LA Valiant. Minute 22 on the clock right now as Fate jumps in. The rest of the team is there. Silk Thread taking on the outside. Kareem soon to fall. And Carpe just tearing this back line apart. He doesn't even need that pulse bomb right now. He is doing fine. Yeah, and he's playing oh, too delay. aggressively. Shadowburn is finding his way into the back line over and over again. And it's causing a lot of issues for Kareem and Burbo. They need to be more active about catching the dive. Yep. All right. Philadelphia still with three ultimates to use here. And they're good ones. Fate with the Primal Rage, the only ult on the side of Valiant as they look at what maybe is going to be their last push here. Yeah, at the same Probably time, will. Yeah, Neptuno has just been gaining the the Valkyrie faster. Yeah. Because a lot of the damage has been going oh, down. Oh, that's not good. Oh. That's not good for Valiant at all. Soon drops on the outside of the fight. They're going to be able to res him, though. Yeah. I mean, it depends on where he died, right? Uh, he was in a place where they could have resed him, but I guess they're just going to decide to let him respawn because they had to fall back. Well, they know they've still got time for one last push, and that's what they're going to do. Soon rejoins the team, but this is it. Valiant, they need to have a big-time success right here if they want to complete Nibani. And they're going in. Fate dives, getting a little bit low here. Has to do the primal rage, maybe. He's down to about a third health, finally gets healing in the end. Somebody's got to get on this payload here. They're going in. Hotba about half health, too. We're into overtime right now. They're going to go and use the Primal Rage on Fraggy to try to keep everybody off the point. Valiant trying to play this one out patiently, it looks like. They got to get back on there. Silk Thread pops that attack visor, but they've got Boombox and that Transcendence to try to keep everybody alive. There's a 1v1 and soon taken out by Shadowburn, and he still has the Dragon Blade. How in the world can Valiant stop this? It's going to be tough. They can't even get to the payload. And that will be Philadelphia Fusion stopping the Valiant just shy of three points on Nimbani. I like the strategy coming in from the Valiant. I like to see them play these poke compositions with things like Farah and Soldier up against a team like the Fusion who likes to backline dive so much. Yeah. But you have to play patiently. What you should be doing against the Fusion is waiting for them to engage into you and punishing Fraggy. That's, totally. how this, that's how this map started. That's where Valiant really got rolling. But towards the end, the tank line of the Valiant was playing too aggressively on point C. And instead of being patient and waiting for the tank line to come to them, try and finish off some kills with that shul uh, the soldier poke with the tracer or with your other tanks, uh, they were overextending, leaving their supports vulnerable. And you just can't leave your supports alone against Carpe and Shadowburn. Well, we got to talk about Carpe as well. I mean, finding the 1v1 against Soon a lot of times in that round. You know, Shadowburn got in on the action a couple times too, but Soon you know, despite a couple cool sneaky little payload pushes, kind of met his match, I think, in the DPS uh, debate so far. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, we know Carpe is uh, another great Tracer player. Totally. Uh, one of the top hitscan players in this league. Also, of course, flexing over to that Widowmaker and competing against other top Widowmakers like Fleta and Lynxer. Yeah. When it comes to the top final blows that we have available to us on Widow. But I don't know. I, I think that you really do have to change your tactics. And when we saw more backline support, for example, when Philadelphia played that narrow series against the Shanghai Dragons, and they tried to dive the backline, and the Shanghai Dragons sort of collapsed backwards yeah. and tried to punish the incoming members of the fusion, they, they played a very close series. So. Well, that was a weird week for Philly last week. I mean, you go 3-2 uh, and you beat New York, and then you go 3-2 and you beat Shanghai. So it's, well, it's, it, 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 it was interesting result. It was. It, there's a lot of reasons, I think, behind that. Of course. Uh, but it's just not something you'd expect to see. Yeah, I think tactically, though, the Shanghai was tr was doing the right thing. And, yeah. In okay. this case, we are going to see a similar defense like we're used to, except for Kareev will be moving over. 
The right thing is generally punishing Fraggy. Skeleton again. Let's see what they can do. And they take him down. Build up Fusion on the attack. Shadowburn on the Genji, or rather, uh, Far on the outside. Raining a lot of damage from on high as they are trying to take this point. They've got Valiant pretty well zoned off, actually. Fate getting a little bit low. Nearly two ticks. No, they do have two ticks already here. And Philadelphia just looks untouchable right now on this point. I mean, they're just getting poked, and they, yeah. didn't, they didn't move in fast enough. <laughs> wow, that was wow. very strange. Valiant gave up so much room there. Bye, Verbo. Man, you don't like Poco have... to have good poke on this team, apparently. <laughs> yeah, you don't. Wow, they are cleaning up, too. I mean, Shadowburn, we know, is an excellent Fara, but they just got slowly shoved off the point using the Soldier and the Ana on the low ground. And then they had no more pressure to actually go in and contest the point. Boombox was creating a crossfire with Shadowburn over the top of the point. And instead of punishing that, instead of aggressively diving in and dividing the supports off of the Valiant, they just sort of sat there and got poked for a long time, but then had to come through through that narrow lane on the low ground. You're not going to win that if you're the Valiant. Oh boy, Fate down, Envy, Dmech taken out already. So Philadelphia Fusion, nobody's going to be stopping this payload in the near future. And this is great for the Man. Fusion. This was the least likely map for the Fusion to win in this series uh, from what we've seen from both of these teams so far. So if they pull out a victory here on Numbani, they're going to be feeling great going into the rest of these maps. Well, they're making it look easy at the moment. Couple ultimates for LA Valiant, but they're going to have maybe one opportunity here to stop the payload on B. I think you got to try and just force out ults, because you don't want them coming in with a large time bank and a zillion ults on the C. I've got the man advantage, Verbo going down. Did I say man advantage for Valiant? That was before Shadowburn went crazy and got three with the barrage. And that's going to be point B, guys. Wow, this is looking like an unstoppable freight train from the Philadelphia Fusion side. At least you got the Transcendence out, though. You probably sure. didn't expect to have that, given the way the ult economy was going from the Valiant. So you pull out the Transcendence, force them to use it to take B, and maybe you could recover here, but still five and a half minutes remaining, and they don't even have to push the payload the whole way. That's an insane amount of time for Philadelphia to finish this one. Valiant certainly sweating at this point, as Fate takes a bit of damage and has to jump out. And Fate in a little bit of trouble here. He's kind of on his own. They're going to send in the self-destruct. That's a good angle. See, so get anybody? No, not quite. They barely got in cover just in time. But Carpe finds Soon again. He has dominated this 1v1 so far. He absolutely has. And Soon's stats have been a major factor in Philadelphia's favor. Whoa. There goes the supports. Well, Envy gets a good self-destruct in there. Both supports down on the Philadelphia side. And finally, a little bit of a break, a little bit of a breather for Valiant as they'll get a little bit of stability on the payload here. And now they have a chance to reset. Both supports, ultimates are going to be available. Yep. We're gonna see Envy here just popping up over uh -oh. the payload. <laughs> Nowhere to run. That's actually one of the best uh, places yeah. to shoot your self-destruct if you're a D.Va player on point C. There's basically no way with lo lower mobility supports like Zenyatta to get away from a self-destruct there. Yeah, well, and unfortunately for uh, Mercy as well, Neptuno didn't have anyone to Guardian Angel to at the time and get out of that as well. Carpe's going to switch now over to the McCree. All right. And Shadowburn, of course, will be on the classic Genji. So they're still trying to punish soon now. Carpe will be doing it with a flashbang instead of attempting to win those tracer duels. I like the switch. The flanking options aren't quite as good, but Kareem decides to take down Carpe anyway, no matter what he's playing. Carpe res by Neptuno. They're not done with this push quite yet. I actually really don't like this switch Ooh, from Carpe. Goodbye. He's already winning the duels, so why change what's been working already? Plus, if we think about how the battles have been going in favor of the fusion, the backline dive has been the most successful thing. They managed to pick up many kills on Kareev and Verbo, so why change the dive now? Why try and poke at them from a distance? That's playing into the strengths of Valiant with Silk Thread on his roster. He's a less aggressive DPS. Well, I guess he must feel like he can't get around the flanks. It is a little bit oh, of a switch back. Point. Yeah, there we go. All right. He feels differently now. <laughs> I think he feels like I feel. <laughs> like that's the, the best way to play this point. So glad to see him flip back right now. Shadowburn is lurking. He's actually in the back lines right now. Soon is trying to 1v1 him on the point. That's right. They're diving in now. Valiant, a little bit scattered here. They managed to get Fraggy on the side. Neptuno taken out by Soon. He got the back lines and delivered the pulse bomb. Kareem gets a kill on the Shadowburn as well. So another good fight for Valiant. And the biggest thing is they've done it without using many ults. They only use that pulse bomb. And they've got five other ones to work with here. And we're down to about a minute 40 on the clock. So Philadelphia 
Maybe he's starting to get a little bit worried here. And the difference for the Valiant was that that time they sent their tanks back to deal with the dive, yeah. punished the dive, and then went back to the point. So they are changing up the way they're calling these fights, and it is effective. There's still so much time left, though, Doa. Well, 2.30. I mean, there's half the time there used to be, so at least there's that for Valiant, but they're certainly not out of the woods just yet. Self-destruct coming in. No kills out of that one. Shadowburn's got the Dragon Blade again. And Valiant just waiting for that dive. You know it's coming. Fate uses that Primal Rage, though. He's just trying to keep yeah. Philadelphia back for the moment. He had to because the cart was getting too close, and the self-destruct had zoned the supports way back. So uh, basically, he was going to die sure. if he didn't use that, or the cart Whoa. was going to move a bunch. Carpe infiltrates the back lines and takes out Kareem, who gets rezzed immediately. But now they've got to deal with Shadow Burn. Neptuno's down. Yep, that's right. Dragon Blade out. Didn't get a whole lot. Neptuno taken out by Envy self-destruct here and be back to life one more time again, but it looks like Valiant will still hold. Just about a minute 40 left now. But all the alts used by Valiant to keep that one alive. All of them, Doa. That was actually a great push from the Fusion because they're coming back with a Valkyrie now. They got what they wanted. Shadowburn traded his Dragon Blade just to make sure that Kareem was forced to use the Transcendence. So this is looking great for the Fusion. They're going to have a couple more pushes, and this time they're going to have all the edges when it comes to those support ults. Yeah, that's the plan. Boombox looking for those picks. Moving around the side. And they're just going to go right for the back line. Oh, that was a lot of damage, actually, into Silk Thread. Yeah, poking in right now. Dangerous moment here. Now the payload's going to get moved. Down to a minute left. Here in the time bank for Philadelphia. Fraggy. Fraggy's primal raging just to buy man. time on the cart. Yeah. Okay, so he used that ultimate so that they only have to use the valve for this last push before they can run it home and win this map. Let's we'll see if it works. Down and up again. Self-destruct comes in. Shadowburn again, trying to just keep Valiant bottled up by Spawn. They've got Kareem really afraid here. Envy taken out by Carpe. As he tried to use his ultimate, I believe. Boombox is down. Yeah, down once again here, but now Shadowburn needs to really try to push everybody on Valiant back in his spot. Can't do it. Still Somebody needs to get on that card. That card is so close. Less than a meter remaining here before Valiant gets on there. Kareem. Minutes from Kareem trying to support everyone. Silk Threat comes in with attack visor now, and that may be it. Just 15 seconds left. I don't think Philadelphia can get back here. That was actually a great fight from both of these teams, so it's going to be desperate now for the Fusion to make it back to the payload. Five seconds. And the positioning looks so good for Philadelphia, but Valiant brought it out. Shadowburn with the Dragon Blade, though. Needs a little bit more. We're into OT. They need to get back on the point. There's the self-destruct on Boombox, but no result as he used the Transcendence. Everybody kept up with that ultimate. Pulse Bomb comes in now from Philly. They're slowly shoving Valiant back, but they need some kills. Carpe needs some health. He has to back off for a second. Envy still sitting on the payload. They got to get back there. Oh, for time. It's going to start ticking away faster and faster now. Self-destruct coming in. No kills from that one. They stay on the payload. There goes Verbo. Boombox stopped to death by fate. Oh, it's still so know, close, man. though, with no, Neptuno up in the air. This Kareem, another transcendence. How did he get it back so fast? That is insane. And everybody, that's what they needed. Kareem back. OT still alive for the moment, but I don't think they can keep it going. Maybe the reses from Neptuno will do it. They get hot but back, but he's immediately de it looks like. And that is crazy. Frank, he can't stay alive. They're still on there. It's only a matter of time now. And there it is. Valiant will barely, barely pull out Nimbani. And while that last fight was crazy with the five seconds left, it was the fight before that that the Valiant played super well. Yeah. At the beginning of that fight, we saw Fraggy pop the Primal Rage to try and keep them off the payload and distract them. However, Fate and Soon went into the back line and assassinated Boombox in response. And that was the kill that triggered the snowball for the Valiant to win. It really does not get any closer than that. It was only at one point 0.55 meters away from a win for Philadelphia Fusion, but Valiant manages to pull it out of the flames at the very last second. I think we're in for a pretty good series, Monte Cristo. And we don't we have are. to wait long. Another map coming up right after this. The Overwatch League is brought to you by Intel, the official computer processor of the Overwatch League. T-Mobile, America's best unlimited network. And by Omen by HP, the official PC and display of the Overwatch League.
Agility is a DPS for LA Valiant. The guy that we get to see that does stand out for me is Agility. Agility has been one of the best Genjis from North America. The reason I enjoy playing DPS is because I get to be the, the damage dealer and I enjoy like being in the spotlight. Genji in particular because I just love that the versatility and mobility he brings. Like he, he's insane. Like you can make so many plays with them. Agility is not playing around here. Agility is hungry. My personal goal for this season is just to learn as much as possible because Overwatch League is set up for a long-term thing and I want to be in it for as long as possible. The team I'm looking forward to playing against the most is uh, London Spitfire because they have a previous roster of GC Busan and they were doing really, really good in Apex. They're the best team and they have uh, the most to teach us. Uh, Agility's having a great fight right now. Have to wait and that's a huge rip tire. Happy birthday, New York. I definitely think that we're going to be a different team by the end of the season because of how much we're going to learn. I do know that we have very good players individually. So as soon as we bring those players together and we make them a good team, then our roster itself has a potential to be one of the greatest in the Overwatch League. No! Oh, no, no. I can't see. <laughs> oh, no, no. Well, Agility certainly has been a big part of that team, and uh, it's been interesting to see how they've used him and Silk Thread kind of swapping between the two. It seems like lately they see Agilities as sort of their Junkrat when they need a Junkrat, that yep. Roadhog too occasionally. Two heroes that you don't really see Silk Thread play. You want him on Nimbani when he's going to be playing the Soldier, that kind of thing. Yeah, he, uh, Agilities does play the Farah as well. Right. Uh, but of course, having that Genji play, it's, it's a difference in Genji style between Silk Thread uh, and Agilities. Agilities really likes to engage. He and Fate have had a long running synergy of both of them engaging at the same time. And Agilities pulling out the Dragon Blade early in some of these fights. So definitely a more aggressive, engage heavy style from Agilities. But I agree. When we look at Temple of Anubis, this is where you're going to want that junk rep, particularly right. on point A defense, where a lot of teams like to run Widowmaker, Junkrat, uh, and so I think we should anticipate that's what we are going to see from the Valiant on this map. But this is very dangerous, Doa, because the Fusion have not lost on Anubis yet, and that includes a an impressive win, as the desk was talking about heading into this match uh, against the New York Excelsior. Hey man, they have looked better and better each week, and it's so funny when we think about the, the history of this team so far in the league where they didn't play in the preseason. They couldn't get everybody there. They came in less practice than any other team. They just had these incredibly strong duos and incredibly strong single players. And despite the fact that their engages are kind of messy, you know, Fraggy is only an L and an E away from Fragile, which is how he looks <laughs> when he goes in super early and dies a lot. But then you've got Neptuno there to res him all the time. Poco's there to keep him alive just long enough. And as weird as it's looked, it has worked for these guys. Yeah, it has. There's a reason why they're up towards the top of our standings, both these teams at four and two. Really fun team to watch, though. Absolutely, and they're only going to get better, as we know. Now, the Valiant are also undefeated on this map, Doa. So is somebody is going to be taking their first loss. Had to happen eventually. But you have to say that beating New York is a much more spectacular feat on Anubis than what we've seen from the Valiant. So we'll give them the edge coming in here. We'll be Carpe boosting the Orisa up onto the high ground with the May, followed by a swap. So this is a different look, uh, potentially, from the Valiant. We'll see if they swap off. Both of these teams like to play Genji Tracer Dive on attack, and both of them like to play the Orisa Junkrat Widowmaker on defense. So pretty standard, but nobody really wanting to commit to the Widow on attack on these teams. You know, we talked about the, the Junkrat from Agilities, but he certainly can play the Genji too. You mentioned that a little bit. He does play it much more aggressively. Sometimes I would think a bit too aggressively, but maybe that's what you need when you want to die at that high ground and try to take down an excellent Widowmaker player like Carpet. Okay, so what? Yeah. Oh boy. Ooh. Ooh. No, what they're doing here. Is... Oh! oh well, you not coming. Okay, well, not coming. What they were doing there, uh, when you see the early Winston jump like that, something that seen Saicho talking about uh, from this team a little bit on social media. When you see that early jump up in the Widowmaker uh, shot Ooh. going through, they're trying to build Valkyrie charge by taking some early damage, but it doesn't work when, you're, when your Mercy just straight up gets domed. 
Yeah, I mean, the idea is you you chase Carpe over to this other pillar and then come up through the building, but that's not what Valiant is doing. They're coming up the middle, and they've got a kill on Shadowburn and Boombox already. Carpe cut down by Agilities, and a resounding team fight win so far from Valiant. Neptuno manages to get the Bloodthirsty <laughs> Mercy kill on the Kareev, but he, that's about all they're going to get. He out-dueled Kareev in the upper room in hey. support one-on-one. -on -one. Hey, that pistol gets you down into the headshot, man. Those headshots are scary for Mercy. That was, that was entertaining, unfortunately. Unfortunately, it didn't really matter because the rest of his team had already perished. And that'll be a yeah. quick attack. That was actually a three-pronged attack. So Valiant faked out the fusion because they had nobody in the top room overlooking the point except for the one Zenyatta. Fusion overcommitted to that, and the Valiant were able to attack straight up the gut with Soon and around the side on the flank with Agilities. And now this is dangerous because Fusion have to swap off. Shadowburn is going to be well down on the Dragon Blade right now because he just had to switch over to that Genji. At least they have a Valkyrie advantage, and that's why we're going to see some poking in here first. Oh, Dragon Blade time. Agility's going in 1v6 as he does a lot. Cuts down Boombox right away. The rest of the team catching up, and they are going to jump onto point B. Boombox brought back up by Neptuno, who's popped that Valkyrie ultimate. And now Agility goes for the 1v1 against Shadowburn. He's going to win it. His team's still on there. No ticks yet, but they're getting close. Hoppa going to get demeked in a second here. He's going to pop that self-destruct just in case. How did he catch Kareem with that? Doesn't uh -oh. matter. The Valkyrie's there, so he's going to get resurrected. Yeah. Still not a situation you want to have to use that resin. Transcendence for Kareem. Valiant trying to push their way back in there. And there's a couple kills that'll help out. Soon looking for that 1v1 on the side, just zoning Carpe out, but he's got Neptuno helping him. That's gonna be tough. Boombox still trying to work his way up to that transcendence. He's just about 10% away. He needs to get it if they're gonna start to turn this fight around. Yeah, Shadowburn slam with a big diva body there. Hotbug comes back with a couple kills of his own with that diva. Ooh, wow, Neptuno barely got back to spawn, but there's a stick, and there's a kill on the Braggy. Hotba demecked as well. And Valiant looking pretty good here. They gotta handle these respawns now. One tick taken already here on B, but with those kills coming in and the resins from Philadelphia, it's still a bit risky here. Well, looks like Valiant's got people back here in time, though. A Boombox died with his Turbo. ultimate up, so it keeps on going here Whoa, in favor of the Valiant. He's gonna die again. That transcendence hasn't been used in those two deaths. Wow, Envy was so decisive, and that is two points already. For Valiant, Monty nearly just walked out the door, guys. That is... <laughs> That's what happens when I see points being taken and, and Zenyatta's not hitting Q over two deaths right there. You have man. to you have to be decisive to get back to that point. You just got a motorboat in there, man. Just uh, hit Q and slide in with that <laughs> transcendence. But I don't think he was expecting Envy to be that aggressive, that decisive with the D.Va. And... Envy is a player that more and more you really need to watch out for on Valiant. That guy has improved tremendously over the course of the season. Yeah, he's doing an immense amount of damage yeah. on this hero as well. He did 24% of his team's damage in that last uh, in that last map, which is great. more than soon and only a couple percent shy of agility. So you can see he's definitely holding his own. But that looked like a communication error there between the members of the fusion because they didn't seem to, to actually stagger the point very well or stagger their respawns. Yeah, they just sort of folded and died in a situation that I think was very winnable. It was puzzling to see Boombox not use that transcendence. I mean, even if you're just delaying the point. Yes, absolutely. Waiting for a couple of your tanks to respawn, just do it, man. Uh, it seemed like the miscommunication may have been that uh, it, some of the other members thought that it was stabilizing, so they were trying to save that ultimate for later. Could be. It almost looked like it was for a second there. Yeah, I did. Uh, I, I, when we saw the, the earlier Valkyrie from Neptuno, though, uh, when Verbo got his later in the fight, the Valk actually, on the side of the fusion, didn't manage to have the DPS of the fusion do the, the necessary, get the necessary eliminations, rather, during that time period. Yeah. Can be tough. There's smoke coming out of those vents on top of that building, but where is the smoke coming from? What's burning in there? I, I actually don't know. Maybe it's incense. A little indoor barbecue? <laughs> I'm hungry now. <laughs> Nothing like an indoor barbecue, as they say, hey. right, Noah? It's Korean barbecue, man. It's delicious. I love that. I miss it. Fusion on the attack. Let's see what they can do. Shadowburn on that Genji, of course. Soon trying to hit those shots with the Widowmaker. Drop the shields. And so Philly will be able to sneak in on the right side. Soon watching the flank. 
Yeah, we're seeing exactly the same thing. Both of these teams tactically play Anubis in similar ways. And that, when you see Shadowburn and Carpe trying to go around to the side, you'll notice that everybody else goes into the opposite side of the point. Use it's more normal than what you see lately. Carpe right on the point. Trying to put some pressure on the Verbo. He's gonna get out, he's gonna be okay. Soon taken down though, Shadowburn with the dive. Envy makes him pay for it. And can they res him? See if Neptuno can get over there. Meanwhile, nearly Neptuno one gets already. punished super hard by Envy. Oh, yeah, they were ready, man. It was a bait. Neptuno flew in. Taken down almost immediately in Valiant. Turning it around, though. Yeah, you're not going to get that res off. Uh, you're standing right underneath no, the no. bulk of the forces from the side of the Valiant. So that, that was Optimus there. He did get the res off, but he paid for it. And that's not a trade you can really afford to make right oh, yeah. now. I mean, at that point, you kind of have to back off. Yeah, Verbo also is so far ahead in terms of Valkyrie charge as a result of Neptuno dying. We've got 60% ahead, 55 now. Alt economy just looking much better in general for Valiant here after that first engagement. Uh, it's going to take another couple of pushes or a low prolonged poke phase here from the fusion yep. to try and match this unless they get a miracle kill onto Verbo. Uh, Carpe really playing with fire here. He's going in. Ooh, that was a close one. He's got that health back if he can time it with his resurrect cooldown. Or not resurrect. Thank goodness Tracer doesn't have a resurrect. <laughs> Valiant coming out early in this fight here soon. Taken down by Shadowburn though. So it looks like Philadelphia going to go back to the drawing board one more time. But... Carpe staying alive for the moment. Now, these are mostly economy pushes from the Fusion. They'll be well aware of the support ult situation on the opposite side. And this is going to slow things down quite a bit. And when we see how much time is in the bank for the Valiant, Fusion struggling mightily to take point A here. All right, Agility is with that Rip Tire. Going to try to stop this push before it starts. Coming down from on high. And there's two Neptuno Boombox. Great Rip Tire from that Agility. That is the worst possible circumstance because you still don't have your support ults up if you're the Philadelphia Fusion. Yeah. It's been slowing you down immensely on this push so far. And now there's, it's going to take even longer to get them up. They are going to get them now, but they're going to have to come off the respawn to do so. And that's another about 20 seconds that was bought by the Valiant for one ultimate. Great trade. That was just perfect. What a great ultimate. That's how you crush a push before it begins. Agility's still holding strong in this top room here. And we'll see a Valiant. Oh, that's, that's a good pick. Down early. That's yeah, a good pick. Finds a good one. They're going to go in with a 6v5 here. Thank you, 6v6. Now 6v5. Shadowburn now 6v6. Kareem. Now 6v6. Oh, Mercy Reza. Shadowburn holding on to that Dragon Blade, though. Philadelphia with an opportunity here. They've got five ultimates to use. Fraggy in the middle of his. Oh, to this go is down. really good for Philly. I think they may have what it takes here. Shadowburn manages to avoid that Deep ultimate for the moment, too. Kareem was very smart not to pop the Transcendence. Yep. So Philly holds That's on that. to nearly all of their ultimates during that engagement. But once the first two picks go down and they have to use both Valk res charges immediately, they know the fight is lost. So instead of committing another support ult, which would have been useless, they just hold on to the Transcendence, which they're going to need against this Dragon Blade. And Philadelphia coming in with a wealth of ults on their but side. Kareem needs to be really careful here. Oh, Frankie dying early. I've never seen that before. No, he's rezzed by Neptuno, of course, who has that Valkyrie ready to go here. Kareem down. They needed that. Now no Transcendence for Valiant. They're in trouble. Maybe Agilities can get something with that Rip Tire, but no, he doesn't. Fate with a couple, though, on that Primal Rage, and Valiant come out ahead until Shadowburn pulls out the Dragon Blade. Can he get anything out of this? He's kind of on his own. Manages to get the Reflect onto Agilities, but that's about it. Neptuno dies to the post-death bombs from Agilities, actually. And Billy's going to have to back off. Neptuno was nearly Whoops. the hero the Fusion needed in that last fight because he killed Kareem with a headshot on his mercy during the Valkyrie, yeah. which cut off the possibility of having that Transcendence. Unfortunately, the Dragon Blade pulled a bit late there by Shadowburn, and he can't get the necessary momentum before the Zenyatta respawns and gets back there with his ultimate. Uh, we basically reset right now. That was a very good window of opportunity for the fusion, but they couldn't make it work. Well, soon down early. There goes Agility's good start for Philadelphia. They've got a big advantage. Coming out of the point right now. Verbo does have that Valkyrie, though, and he manages to get both his DPS back up again. Envy, oh, rather, back on the point. Philadelphia just going to try to wait this one out, maybe. 
Waiting out that Mercy Ultimate, Neptuno in a lot of trouble. Oh, he's low and they can't keep him alive. Hot the D-Mect as well. And that's another hold for Valiant. Still no ticks taken by Philadelphia Fusion. I mean, yes, it's a hold by Valiant, Doa, but it's not looking good for them. That's the second time in a row they've had to use Valkyrie to fix mistakes from people going too aggressive. And what that means is they're staggering their support ultimates with the Fusion. So every time they do that to fix their own mistakes, they're giving the Fusion a window to have a successful attack. Yeah, very true. And they're going to try to use that window right now as they go in. Only two minutes remaining. They need to get something going here. Still not a single tick taken yet. Maybe now's the time. Agilities wants to say no on that one. Boombox low, Boombox down. Neptuno with that Valkyrie brings his Zenyatta back, out, uh, back up again, rather. Boombox in trouble again. There's Reflect. Oh, but Shadowburn coming from on high. Soon on the point. Trying to hold it off with Fate in that Primal Rage. He's trying to chase Shadowburn away now. Akko with the self-destruct, he was gonna get demacked anyway. Soon manages to avoid the damage. Transcendence now from Boombox. Managed to make it back to the fight one more time. And Dragon Blade coming. Oh, Boombox right there! He shuts he him was down. Ready. Shadowburn's been holding his Dragon Blade now. Kareev has used the Transcendence. This is his time! Yep. And he may have enough. The rest of Valiant over in that narrow choke. Soon cut down as well. Shadowburn may have just done enough. They've nearly got it. There goes Envy just a bit more. And they will finish. 110 on the clock. So Valiant still with a lot in the time bank. Yes, they do. They still have an advantage, but Fusion, that's what I'm talking about. When you use your Valkyrie because you've lost two players, the next fight comes along and you don't have that ability. Fusion punishes it perfectly. Shadowburn has his Dragon Blade to start that engagement and he waits and he yep. waits for the support ultimate to be used, for Kareev to use that Transcendence. That's when he cleans up the point. And again, Shadowburn with the big wipe to make sure Philadelphia clutches out the round and at least gets some time in the bank. You know, I, I can tell you as a Zenyatta player that nothing feels worse than having to use your Transcendence knowing that that Genji on the other side still has his Dragon Blade up because when he pulls it out, you better have that right click ready. You better have that alternate fire ready because if you don't land that one, you are going to be dead immediately. And the rest of your team will too, probably. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, yeah, I, absolutely. It's that really dangerous moment that you have. Yep. And Shadowburn is an ace when it comes to recognizing the right timing for these Dragon Blades to push his team over the edge. I don't think I've ever seen anyone be as patient as Shadowburn is with those. It really is impressive watching him play this. And it always has been. It's been his hero. Most deadly mercy. I talked to our stats guys about this. The correct, the correct start of that, or the correct title for that is the what? Blaster Master. <laughs> That's true. Which is 16, 16 kills now, so Neptuno will take the crown for the Deadliest Mercy. Nice. Here we go. Philadelphia. Coming in on the right side one more time. We'll see if they go through that right side room again. Usually teams will take that high ground. Looks like that's where they're headed. Yep, this is the same attack we saw from Philadelphia. It's a 4-2 split yep. around the sides of the point. Carpe and Shadowburn are by themselves. Carpe is going to put some pressure on the point now. Fox has to be a bit careful here. That's why. He's going to take a lot of shots being on his own here. Philadelphia trying to draw pressure away from him, though. Shadowburn just waiting on the side. He's going to go up. Maybe he can get... Uh, to oh, Neptuno and Carpe down already. Shadowburn finds himself shorthanded as his team tries to take the point. Fraggy dies as well. Might get a little bit of revenge kill on the fate. Yep, that is going to be one. Gets agilities too. Uh oh, Shadowburn has a chance to pop off now. He's got the orb on him. Yeah. Play soon and be in Kareev less on the side of Valiant. He has to just wait for his reinforcements. They're going to end up in a six on three once Hotbar right. rejoins them. Well, yeah, Valiant's going to get there quicker, but already time out for Philadelphia Fusion. Somebody's got to get to the point. They get there just in time. There's the overtime. Shadowburn zoning out Valiant on that high ground. Oh, Reflect up. No Reflect there. Trying to fire away NVD Mac. That's a problem for the Valiant here. One tick taken already by Fusion. Yes, there it goes soon. Great patience. Shadowburn, here it comes. Dragon Blade, but Transcendence. now the Transcendence is there. Kareev had it, and when the Trance is out, that ninja's not gonna do too much. 
Can Philadelphia compensate though? Hoppa goes down as well, but he does catch fate in the process with the self-destruct. Agility's taken out, and this overtime is gonna get intense here. Boombox on the side of the fight. He's got his transcendence now as his team continues to try to push, and maybe they might just have it here. Verbo's still alive, and he's nearly got that Mercy ultimate. He yeah, has to get it soon. Transition Three over to up. the Sombra just to get there faster. They're trying desperately to there stall this out. Envy is back up now. Yeah, Kareem falls again. And Envy falls before he can get back in the mech. Philadelphia in a great position to take this one. Gonna have another transcendence off. from Boombox. Yeah, Valiant can't hold this. And they're going to have to give up point A. So in overtime, Philadelphia Fusion will get it. And they'll get 30 seconds now to attack point B. And a huge part of that was Neptuno having the Valkyrie up just a little bit faster than Verbo. Yeah. Has that fi fight drag drug on, I should say. Soon, not going to go with the Sombra here. He did get some old percent up. And Sombra is strong on defense. But he wants to make that transition back to the Tracer. Oh, they Verbo dead. That's right. Fraggy comes in with the Primal Rage almost immediately. That's one tick taken by Philly already. Bo, oh, that's two ticks taken by Philly already. Valiant being routed completely. This would be insane if they could take point B with just 30 seconds as they go into it. That's crazy, man. Shadowburn going out. Can he get the heals? He does. Dragon Blade at the ready. Here it comes from on high. Verbo down immediately. And the rest of the Valiant are in big, big trouble. That is going to be it. Philadelphia Fusion in OT. Take point A and then only needs 30 seconds to grab B. That was such a decisive snowball off of point yeah. A. A lot of it thanks to Shadowburn getting two Dragon Blades up over the course of that time bank push. Wow. And Valiant are going to have to match them now in order to stay in this game. This one has been intense. And the nice thing for the LA Valiant is that they still have four minutes and 46 seconds left in the time bank. That is a lot. That is plenty of time to take two points if everything is executed well. They certainly did it well the first time. Yeah, they did. They've got to really repeat that feat, though, basically in the similar time frame. Otherwise, they're going to be in trouble. Yep. Philly coming out with a minute and 10 seconds to start that round on attack and delivering. All right, Philadelphia Fusion doing the near impossible already and getting themselves four points here on Temple of Anubis. Both of these teams, like we mentioned earlier, are undefeated on this map so far this season. I really like what Philadelphia is doing on this defense. They're playing dive on defense, and the reason why they're doing this is if they, tra if they try and play the Junk Grab Widowmaker, they're gonna have to switch heroes. And they know that they can give up point A, but they don't wanna reset their ult economy when they can hold for a while, potentially, at point B. So this is more difficult to get snowballed on because you're not actually changing your composition. Sure. So I like what we're seeing. It's gonna be dive versus dive. Right. Soon actually sees this is gonna go back and change, and so is Agilities. Interesting. Okay. It's gonna be Widow and Junkrat. Well, they know they've got the time here. They've got enough time in the time bank to take a little bit slow, to try to be a bit more methodical. That's what they're gonna do. Soon, that back line. Fusion playing it smart, though. Everybody's sneaking on that right side, staying out of the shots from the Widowmaker. And the reason why Valiant is doing what they're doing is they're gonna play this poke game right now. And the idea is if they can get a pick with the Widowmaker on an enemy support, they'll come into the second point with a support ult advantage. Yep. Uh, and that's where they're going to snowball from. So this is actually some very high level team comp switching that we're seeing right now. Oh, close call. That reflect nearly came in on the Zunes. A little bit of damage here. Raggy low. There's a kill on the Fate. Philadelphia with an edge here. Fate was trying to get back to his supports, but yep. died in mid flight. Here we go. Zunes versus Shadowburn. Shots come in. Both players back away. Coming out ahead on that one. He knows he can just create a bit more space on the high ground. Yep. Yeah, this is good, good play against the Widowmaker. Staying out of the line of sights from the Philadelphia Fusion. Rip tire. He's going to have that Dragon Blade Agilities with the Rip Tire. Oh, he's coming in. Finding anything with it. That tire's getting low. No kills from Agilities on that Rip Tire. Fraggy does go down again, but Rez again by Neptuno. There goes Shadowburn. So now maybe an opportunity for Valley, but they lose Agilities. They need to keep pushing here. Shadowburn's also down, though. Oh, that's looking good for Valiant. A couple kills already. Braggy dies one more time. 
And they've got a huge edge. That's going to be point A. I don't think Philly's going to be able to come back. I don't think they're going to want to come back and try to defend that. But the price was very high. The price was using the Valkyrie while Philadelphia Fusion held on to theirs. Sure. You'll notice that the Fusion did not commit any ults. This was all a delay tactic. They're putting their eggs in the basket of point B, saying, we're going to hold strong here. They don't care if point A goes. They're just devoting all of their resources into making sure they can hold on B. Yeah, the issue here is that Valiant has time. Again, they've got time to build up their own ultimates. They've got time to try to that's solve the That's a great, great shot on the boombox, and that's an opportunity. Valiant can capitalize on this one. They gotta get there in a hurry, though. Kareem goes down due to Carpe's bomb, and already boombox back in action one more time. Got res, and soon has to back away. Verbo falls. That's gonna be maybe the end of it for Valiant here. Gonna be hard to push forward without that mercy. Look how cool the Philadelphia Fusion stay though. They're staying frosty. Even though Boombox goes down, they don't panic and use the Valkyrie. They use the Resurrect ability without the Mercy Ultimate, bring it back up, and they use lower value ults instead, such as the Primal Rage to buy that time and buy that space. So you're super happy, I think, right now, if you're one of the Fusion coaches. That's right. Valiant trying to push in yet again. Virgo getting pretty close to that Valkyrie here. Envy goes in, they're gonna try and deep back Hotba. Did they do it? Ooh, he came low, but I think the healers are gonna come in. Fate trying to capitalize on that. They're gonna send the self-destruct in, actually. Envy trying to protect his tank. Gonna end up on a point, getting a little bit of control percent. Frank, he brought back up by that transcendence. Kept alive, I should say, by that. But they're gonna keep chasing him. He's getting low. Boombox taking down agilities. Biding his time, maybe gonna try to do his best Shadow Burn impression with a late Dragon Blade. May not even need it though. I think you might want to finish this one with it though. Draggy, backing away, gets taken out by Envy, and here comes the Blade now. Can he cut Hotpa out of the mech in time? Well, I'm not sure now. Hugo comes in with the double res, so Philadelphia is still holding on this one for the moment. Reef has his own transcendence, and yeah, looks like Valiant. It's going to be able to get a chance here to build up. The oh, yes, they are. Percent. Everybody's dead, so it's yep. going to be uh, the attempt now for the fusion to stagger this. Ooh, oh, they can't get there. Oh, man, they managed to keep Envy out of the point at the very last second, or keep Hotba out at the very last second, rather. And we are 4-4 four to four here on Temple of Anubis. Yeah, only a minute 11, though, for the Valiant to cap point A. Otherwise, it will be a tie yep. on this map. So fusion. Need to hold here on A if they want to get a tie out of this one. Otherwise, it will be the Valiant heading up 2-0. They had a decent defense last round out. I liked that they kind of played the dive, sat on the right side. It, it collapsed at some point, but the, if the execution, I think, can be a little bit better, I think they can hold for at least a minute. I think the Fusion adapted super well after having a very poor initial defense to even push it to this point. But with so much time in the bank, it was going to be uh, a lot of effort and difficulty to keep the Valiant out That's right. from tying this one up. And they bought some time. I think they had good old management for the most part. <clears throat> Fell apart a little bit there at the end. And they still have a chance here. They still have a chance to tie it up, to keep themselves in this series and not having to reverse sweep in order to win. <laughs> Nobody wants to have to do that. Fans like it. I think it's kind of stressful for the players. <laughs> I think so. Got a make, it, make it easier on yourself a little bit. A little bit. Philadelphia Fusion on the defense here. Valiant only needs the first tick on point A to win this map and go up 2-0 in this series. That same composition. So they know they're going to play dive on defense. So it's yep. back to the Widowmaker and the Junkrat. Yep. Envy's on a boat. Flying boat. Yeah. It's not going very fast, though. No, it's not going anywhere. Zero miles per hour. All right. Carpe is actually getting behind Kareem right here. Attempting to put a little bit of damage into the support line. No shields, though, so if soon turns around, he might be able to find it. Some shots into Fraggy there. He's a little bit low health himself. Oh, that was oh. a ton of Carpe. He found him. And you're not going to get a res on that with the members of the Valiant oh, swarming over his corpse. I think uh, maybe Fate can finish that one off. No Boombox gets the heals just in time, but they're already on there. They didn't really got it. Somebody's got to stop them. They got to get on the point here. Yeah, they only need a couple more percent. Fraggy that first down. tick is all they need. That is big. Fraggy out of the way right now. And without that Winston, it's only hot, but he's got his self-destruct, though. He manages to zone them for the moment, but Fraggy, or rather Fate with that shield, 
Hip nearly got it one more time. Hotba comes back up again. Can he get back in the mech? No, he can't. Transcendence from Kareem trying to finish this one off again. Neptuno floating above, and now Frankie back again with not a lot of health left. He's gonna try to get in the back line. It's not gonna work out. And that is gonna be it for Valiant. They will take the map and go up 2-0 in this series. And that was the mountain the Valiant had to climb. If they yep. can win Anubis, against the Fusion, it's a statement map. Fusion have looked fantastic on Anubis so far, and that is the first loss for them in Egypt. Well, I mean, Valiant, you know, it felt like they had a couple missteps last week. They're really coming back today, looking like a playoff caliber team. And like we talked about, this match has big stakes for the playoff. Fusion needs to reverse sweep to win it. We'll see if they can get that started after halftime. See you soon. The Overwatch League is brought to you by Omen by HP, the official PC and display of the Overwatch League. Intel, the official computer processor of the Overwatch League. And by T-Mobile, America's best unlimited network. It's halftime here in the Blizzard Arena, and right now it's the hometown squad, the LA Valiant up 2-0. Crowd, you guys liking what you're seeing so far? Yeah, me too. It's been pretty fun. Incredibly close games one and two, and here to break down the action, we got Sideshow, we've got Bren, and let's get right into this, starting with Numbani, and we should just open things up here with a bit of discussion about what we saw from the two squads. What were their play styles? Yeah, this is incredibly interesting to me because it shows that both of these teams have put a lot of preparation into the opposing side. So Philadelphia, normally very aggressive team. As as the casters and people keep referencing, Fraggy can be found as deep as the eye can see, way into the enemy's back line. But he didn't play like that today. 
they both of these teams slowed down. So LA Valiant are expecting Fraggy to play very aggressive. So they're playing a Soldier 76 and Tracer designed to kill him as soon as he jumps in. Whereas uh, the Philadelphia Fusion slowed way down and instead of having that high progressive dive, just uh, kind of took care of the flanks a little bit more and were able to pick off soon when he went for these plays. So you said a little bit of a slower play style and I feel like that may contribute to why we're not seeing Poco from the Fusion and Hopper's in the mix instead, Brent. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Hopper coming in was a big question mark for a lot of us. We were wondering what exactly they were going for with this, but you can see there's a stack card here comparing Envy and Hopper and this really does highlight why uh, they were running him. Hopper's a lot more passive, a lot more protective of his support and it does show that Fusion were going for a bit more of a, a a passive sort of patient play style where they protected the back lines a lot more whereas Envy was going for a lot more kills he's got a lot more damage done a lot more eliminations and final blows as well to boot so it really does that that sort of discrepancy was highlighted there and Fusion I, I gotta say I was impressed how they did actually slow the tempo down of their game style because it's normally teams only have the one play style to go for which was that scrappy game style which we saw out of Fusion multiple times and it did throw uh, Valiant off guard a little did, bit yeah. in that game as it was going on. Yeah, and to break it down a little bit more, I've got an Insights powered by Intel telestration that I want to go through. And just to set it up for starters, we have got this paused in a minimap point of view. So here's the, the uh, composition that the LA Valiant are running. And it involves their backline staying very close together. And Silk Thread is now part of this because he's playing the Soldier 76. So he's waiting for Fraggy to engage. Then he's going to try and burst him down. Soon is looking for these flanks over here, and you can see that Shadowburn has been put on the counter soon duty, and that really frees up Carpe to play much closer to the rest of his tanks and help them in this frontline duel. And then obviously they've got the Anna in the back line that keeps the tanks up. So as this fight plays out, you can see the Philadelphia Fusion on your right hand side, the team that we normally expect to be taking the initiative, are not. And if I pause again here, you'll see that the LA Valiant have dove in incredibly deep. So they realized that this scrappy engagement in the middle wasn't working, and instead, they've dived all the way to the back line. So soon came from this, uh, this point of view, and Fate dived in, and they're aiming to get onto Boombox in the back, and, and basically whoever they can. And you saw that, that instantly Hopper is reacting. So as Bren was saying, uh, Hopper is the more defensive of the two Divas that they have available. So he's going to go straight to the back line, whereas Fraggy is still keeping up the front. And because these fights are going on so long, because both of the teams have slowed it down, it means the ultimates have much more of an effect. So Fraggy's able to use his Primal Rage to stall it out. They also have the Self-Destruct to force all of the back line away. And then you see Shadowburn at the end, able to hold on to his Genji Blade for so long that he gets the cleaner at the end and Shadowburn holds on to his uh, blades for the longest out of any of what we co would consider the main Genjis in the league. So there was your insights powered by Intel. Very good breakdown there Sideshow but we should point out Valiant still won the game despite a blistering fast attack that we saw coming in here from the Philadelphia Fusion. It was the Valiant holding. Before we move on to game two, Brent, real quick, can you break it down for us? How was Valiant able to win that first game when it looked like it should have been Phillies? Valiant kind of just stuck with what they knew, which was playing that sort of clinical, surgical dive composition. We, we can actually go into this a bit into map two as well a little later on about how we, we did this. But, uh, well, we're going to dive into it right now. And you can see here is a great example of why Valiant are so good. It's the fact that they can dive straight into the back lines and get those picks. This was a great dive on the first initial point here for a new Anubis, we saw them very successful dives, and the Fusion struggled to adapt. This was the case in Nambani, also Anubis a little bit. They struggled to really sort of figure out what was going on, and Valiant had time to set up these coordinated, orchestrated dives coming in at uh, multiple angles. Who's the most important feature in that? It's, it's got to be the tank play. Honestly, Fate and Envy, for me, are the most important instruments in making sure you have a successful dive. As we take a look at the rest of Anubis, we know that Valiant was able to take Numbani. A huge final hold gives them the win there. As we take a look at some of the highlights from the second map, of course, this is the Valiant on the attack early. Carpe causing problems on defense, and then finally the tanks were able to break through, which Bren just showed us. But what's the story of the match so far? Saksha, what did you see in this game? So what I saw here was, particularly when we look over at Los Angeles Valley, and the idea that we had coming into it was, where is Verbo going to sit in this? Because we haven't seen him fielded in the regular season on this Mercy roll alongside Kareem. And so how are, the, how are their ultimates going to work out? Because Los Angeles Valley are normally pretty good with this. And as Monty was referencing, the Valkyries were occasionally used in poor situations, but it wasn't because Verbo was making the mistakes. It was because the rest of his team was having to play this aggressive style, and he had to go and save them. 
with the Valkyrie. But even so, they're able to clutch it out in these situations because they're playing this uh, high tempo style with agilities, either on the Junkrat or on the Genji, and he's able to come out with some massive big moments for them. Yeah. In general, uh, across the board, I gotta say, Valiant's play style seems a lot more, I've already mentioned clean and, and clinical, but it is, they, the Fusion DPS in general had a lot more troubles creating big plays like they did in their match against New York Excelsior across the board. That's what I noticed, mainly from Shadowman and Carpe. They weren't having as much impact when they were playing this passive play style. So it's that sort of uncomfortable sort of play style, the change up, the switch up, which has taken Fusion out of their comfort zone a little bit, and Valiant have managed to capitalize quite big off of it. If you're the coach of Philadelphia Fusion right now, do you put Poco back in that mix, tell Fraggy to go back to that aggressive play style? You're down 0-2. How do you come back in this series? Yeah, I, I genuinely think it's time to swip, swap it up, to be honest. Poco coming back in will change things up. Yes, there's the argument to be made that Valiant are going to be prepped for it, prepared against for it, uh, against Poco's dive, because they've got more footage to review, more VODs to review, but I feel like you need to switch it up, start going back to your comfort zone, start playing a bit more aggressive. Sideshow, what do you want to see in the second half from both of these squads? I want to see how this duel between Carpe and Soon keeps playing out throughout the rest of the series. It has been intense so far. Both of these guys have very flanky styles. Look at that, just straight up taking a 1v1 to start out Numbani. And Carpe did get the better end of Numbani overall. Soon at the highest deaths on the server, he was getting shut down a lot. But as soon as you unleash him, and as particularly towards the end of the map, he had some big plays. And coming forwards, our next Next two maps, as we go onto Oasis and then onto Dorado, this kind of aggression, this kind of fast-paced style could really define how the fights go. And both of these guys are so good. I hope we see a game five. I'm cheering on Philly here in the second half, and that is going to do it for our halftime coverage. Now, as we head into commercial break, before we get there, we want to hit the story of LA. If you guys tune into week three, you saw a ridiculous comeback. We had the Battle of LA with the Gladiators going up against the Valiant. The Valiant were in the same shoes Philly is in right now, down 0-2 at the half. And in the social studies, we're going to cover not only the Valiant's reaction to their reverse sweep, but also their fans from around the world. Two LA teams going toe to toe yeah. on the biggest stage in Overwatch. And it's the match everybody in this audience wants to see. It's the battle for LA, and you don't want to miss it. Right, Gladiators today. Don't think to yourselves, hey, it's Gladiators, we've beaten them once, you know, because they will give you a hard game if you sit back and relax. It, it's easy now, we just have to go in there, play solid, play clean like we have, last quick, quick. Oh, Zero4 takes one shot, trying to connect with agility, can't quite do it. Self Shark comes in and finds Big Goose. That's a big one. Ooh, Kareev a little bit low on that Mercy. And I think the Valiant may be in a little bit of trouble here. Depends on what they can do with the OT bar ticking away. And the Gladiators have won map one. Icon Bald is theirs. What a great hero switch from Shark 4 at the end of that. So the Gladiators knew they had. Okay, they're not even playing that well right now. We're just playing worse than them, okay? You've walked out there cocky, thinking we can win this easy. I told you we wouldn't, because they were trying their hardest to prepare for us. So go out there like you did last week, when you was ready, when you was prepared, and you thought, you know, we're gonna beat Spitfires. Do the same now. The crowd's behind you, the crowd wants you to win. I need you guys to rally yourselves up. Serious healing on these tanks right now, but they're all bottled up in that room, finally escaping, oh, but there's the silk, they're at Big nice. Goose. Nice Take it out there. After being down 2-0 against the Gladiators in the Battle of Los Angeles, the Valiant managed to win the third map. And now we're on Junkotan, map number four, where they're trying to do the same thing again, tie the series up, and maybe, in the end, walk away with the win. Charger lasted a while, didn't last long enough. Not enough to save soon anyway, but the kills still coming in for, uh, for Valiant anyway. Let's have it right here. Yeah, goodbye, Big Goose. And that is it. We are going to map number five. Valiant takes Junkotan. Town. And this is the time, Valiant working on that reverse sweep, Doa. We've only oh seen one, and it was the Glock. Oh, yeah. As well, whoa, Jill is going to jump Shaz. back. Everybody wants to get onto Shaz, and they're going to find it. Fast success. Big Goose falls as well. Remix swinging away, but he can't keep it. Oh, no, oh, oh,
The Overwatch League is brought to you by Toyota. Let's go places. Streak from Fraggy. Hunko rolling this fight. Carpe going to work. Unbelievable! And that is Philadelphia Fusion winning that map. Good fight here for the Valiant. And so far, the Valiant are coming out on top. Neptuno flying high. This guy is doing it all on his own. Wenby's actually found himself multiple kills in this fight. Carpe and Saddleburn. The old one two punch. Well, it's a mountain to climb, guys, for Philadelphia Fusion if they want to get back in this one and keep their playoff hopes alive. And, well, it's going to be tough. Valiant up 2-0 already, and they've been looking very, very dominant today. Yeah, that's true. And also, even though we have seen a positive win record from the Fusion on Oasis, unfortunately, they did lose to the Shanghai Dragons on true. this map. So that has me, I think, a bit concerned for them. It was really a best of times, worst of times week for uh, Fusion. Yeah, <laughs> having that close win over an all-Korean player roster and then having a tight match against Shanghai Dragons. But we'll see what happens as we move on to Oasis. There were other factors, of course, that went into those matches last week. But hey, it's a new week. It's week four. Everybody's got playoffs on the brain. Yeah, they definitely do. And in spite of the Fusion being down 0-2, I'm really impressed by the progress that they've made in terms of their teamwork, because no as doubt. the desk was highlighting, they seem more controlled today. They seem like they're starting to gel in terms of their communication and taking better advantage of their positioning. So well, this is still going to be a dangerous team moving forward. You know, the thing is, is when we talked about this team at the very beginning of stage one, a lot of us were saying, you know, this is a team that I see being strong in stage two, right? Stage one is going to be getting everybody on the same page, 
uh, you know, with chemistry, with composition and all that. And I think, honestly, like you're saying, they have exceeded set, uh, uh, expectations in that category. Yeah, I think they have, and uh, they're also going to be hopefully exceeding expectations here on Oasis compared to their last to. time, because we are going to see Gardens as our first match, which is the point the Fusion won against the Dragons, and also the most Farah friendly. And when we think about Shadowburn, of course, everybody will be quick to jump to the Genji, but you also have to be concerned about his incredible Farah play. So this is the point, I think, where the Fusion have the biggest advantage, and so it'll be nice for them yeah. if they are starting on it. On the LA Valiant side, they're gonna go with D.Va Roadhog as their tank duo here. Envy has made waves on this hero in the recent past. You are not prepared, Spray? I don't know, they're looking pretty prepared to me. I don't know if I agree with that, Spray. Yeah, they do look they do look prepared today, and this is uh, about front-loading a lot oh, of damage. Ooh. So with the D.Va and the Roadhog combination, you don't have that barrier, but you do have a way to quickly burst down enemy tanks. So, so it does work well. That's the idea. Uh, went for two hooks on Neptuno, no success. Bye. Going to take a dive. Goodbye, Envy. Shadowburn with a knockoff kill. Okay. Agility is picked out of the air. Shadowburn already showing us what he's got on that far, and we knew it was going to be scary. Philadelphia with an easy first take here on Gardens. Yeah, and that's going to prompt a swap right away. Envy will be moving to, or actually he's just gonna re-mech. Doesn't even jump off the map. Well, he's gonna swaps go, uh, the, yeah, swaps the hero to get his mech back, and then Fate oh, will move on to the Winston. Yeah. And Verbo on that, Lucio. Getting everybody back to the point in a hurry soon. About half health here as he tries to engage. Can't even quite get on the point right now. They're gonna dive. Coming kind of around the side here. Neptuno, keeping everybody healed though in the back. And they're not actually I'm able not to get a lot of damage down. Finally, no. they're going to do something in terms of demecking Hotba. So a quick kill there. Yeah, good cornering on the Hotba there. That's one tank out of the way. And now they're going to get Verbo as well. Neptuno falls though. Meanwhile, Valiant finding their own kills here in this fight. But Shadowburn coming in. He's got that barrage. He just needs to find the right time to use it. Going to back off from the point for the moment as Boombox brings a couple people up. Again with that Valkyrie. Valiant nearly has that point flip. Oh, agility so low. One more rocket. Just a bit of splash damage would do it. And Hoppa taking matters into his own mechanical hands. With that kill, Philadelphia Fusion, it was close, but it looks like they barely held on to the point. And that was the, the result of No, having... it got flipped. Oh, it got They flipped. snuck back on. They snuck back on at the very soon, end. Soon, snikes, <laughs> uh, strikes again, man. Sneakiest tracer in the Overwatch League. Gonna get Valiant a little bit of percentage here. They come back on Envy with a kill on the Carpe. With that uh, self-destruct. Not going to be able to get back in the mech himself. Wow, that was such a clutch play, Doa, because yeah. they've now given Kareem the chance to get his Valkyrie up. That's a fight that should have been won convincingly Ooh. by the Fusion, and instead, the Presenter ticking for the Valiant so soon. How many times has he made the clutch objective play? He does it again! And look at this! He stole all of that percentage! What a thief he is! Philadelphia would already be at 99% right now if it weren't for soon. That's ridiculous. Stealing that point for the Valiant, you just can't, you can't underestimate this guy's value on the team. <laughs> that... What he brings in the, uh, the DPS role, what he brings in sheer game sense. It's this game sense that constantly amazes me, though. It yeah. seems leaps and bounds ahead of many other players in this league in that regard. That's right. Trying to find that kill on the Carpe here. A little bit annoying on the Tracer. Chasing him down. Carpe getting the help back. He finds it. Now we do have the 1v1. There's a recall from soon. He's going to back away. Okay, he, to Carpe. Yeah. he saw the mercy. He's like, okay, I can't win this anymore. No, I'm not going to be allowed to <laughs> DPS that. Nope. Nope. Gets out of there in a hurry. Finds Carpe again, though, on the side. If he can isolate it, maybe he can get that 1v1. And Neptuno is going to be coming in here with... The sound barrier is going to be matched, though, by Verbo. Both support Mercy's working on that Valkyrie. Kareem nearly there. Oh, primal Rage, Fraggy, going down anyway. Looks like, uh, yeah, soon. Still going to be hunting people here on the point. Boombox brings Neptuno back again. There's the sound barrier now from Neptuno. Philadelphia Fusion really would like to take this point back because Valiant already with 90% here, but they're starting to scramble a little bit. Verbo uses that sound barrier a little bit later. Oh boy. Still falls. Valiant way ahead and we are into OT. Hotba taken out by the self-destruct. There's another shot from Agilities and Fraggy, the it's last only man standing. Fraggy. Or the last gorilla bouncing, I guess, on the point, you could say. See ya. He's like, I must go. My people need me. And he also oh, dies. Neptuno going to be the next target. It's just him and Shadowburn. Carpe going to work his way around the flank right now, but he's not going to get it. Soon stole that 
point for the Valiant. That what should not hero. have been theirs. Man. Soon coming up clutch. That's right. Stealing the point, stealing the entire round. For That's Valiant. ridiculous. That's ridiculous. That one play basically decided that point. Yep. He really set everything back up for his team. Fusion were looking good. They had the faster Valk. They used it to control that point, but because they didn't have anybody else there, soon flips it, and then they come back with the Valkyrie, and that snowball just turns into a convincing win. Ooh, and it looks like we got a little bit of uh, four tank Five, action going out on the four, Valiant side of things. Three, two, going for the Moira Lucio one, here, and this is something I can guarantee you burbo has been excited about. He is where the, person, the Lucio, rather, really comes to life. Yeah, Fusion gonna be going with the strategy that they typically use on University, which is... Yep. Going to be three tank and McCree, but that McCree probably not going to get a lot of value with the, against the quad tank. Oh, they're going in. Valiant engaging pretty hard here. Trying to push him back. Hop and D-Mecta already. Fraggy on the run. Maybe the right click can do it. No, not quite. Shadowbird falls either way. Man, and the Slambulance has arrived. That four tank. Moira Lucio, if you don't see it coming, it hits you pretty hard. This is one of those points that the fusion has not been spectacular on. Shadowburn can flex over to the Zarya, but they haven't really looked cohesive. And actually, Fraggy's gonna get hooked in. Yeah, close call there for Fraggy. Gets out. Just in time. Valiant already with a near 20% lead here. Yeah, they're gonna first feeling really good. I like Shadowburn now switching over to the Junkrat. You need to destroy these barriers, try and build up your rip tire because the idea here is you want to get the rip tire on the beefy bodies of this composition and use the rip tire to kill their supports. That's the plan. Carpe pops high noon. No kills out of that one. Gets killed instead. And Valiant jumping in. Goodbye, Boombox. There's another hook. And the agility is, I gotta say, feeling pretty good here. They're really using this guy to the max. We talked about it. Junkrat, Roadhog, that's what you generally use this guy on right now if you need Envy to be on the D.Va, and they're crushing it. And Carpe swaps to Doomfist. Interesting, I mean, this is what Doomfist was kind of made for. He was kind of made to break up these big tank lines. Let's see if he can do it. You also want to punch the Reinhardt up to make sure some of those grenades from the Junkrat can get through. Yeah, you disrupt the defensive uh, nature of all those shields, all those BP bodies, scatter the team. Try to pick people off again. Carpe waiting for their right click in action, waiting for the shield to go down. Fate back up against the wall. Doomfist in action. Gets a big E coming down on top of everybody. Kareem falls as well. But here comes the total speed, the scene rather. They go for the bigger bang. But Envy's self-destruct just doesn't connect. This might be Fusion taking the point here. That was not a well-executed combo from the Valiant. Not really. So the value of those ultimates falls pretty precipitously. Oh, and that's going to be a big stagger. On to Envy here. Yeah, meanwhile, Fraggy got a lot out of his use of the Earth Shatter. Caught two in it, and Carpe was right on top to deal the additional damage. Hey, the Doomfist worked. Did exactly what it was supposed to do. And no adaptation from Valiant just yet. They've got some ults. They're going to try to retake the point. I think they're going to be feeling okay here. Considering they do have the two support ultimates ready. Fake going to be swinging Ray in the front line. We see Carpe lurking on the high ground. Wants to get a pick. That's Not right. going to hit Ooh. anything. Yeah, he misses with the uh, the right click there. Tries to come in. Shadow burn down. Back up against from Neptuno. Whoa, Carpe just can't seem to connect. He's going to go ahead and use the ultimate. But he can't hit Fraggy with it. Not enough damage. Shadow burn comes in with the Rip Tire, though. Kareem goes down. But most of Fusion out of action already. Earth Shatter comes in. And Carpe finds himself laying low. And this is going to be Valiant winning this fight and probably taking the point back. Yeah, yeah they will. Well. Just Boombox alive. So yep. soon cleans up Boombox in the end. They manage to use the Earth Shatter and the Whole Hog to push everybody from the fusion off the point. They're trying desperately to get there as we hit 99%. Shadowburn going to be zipping on. He's onto the Tracer. That's right. They at least forced overtime. The rest of Philadelphia needs to get there, though. They need to get there in a hurry soon. Has a Graviton uh -oh. Surge. Goes and uses it. There's the oh, no! from Envy. But everybody's already dead by the time the self-destruct goes off. Didn't even need it. OT ticket away. And LA Valiant will take Oasis 2-0. And they will win this match. Didn't need the bigger bang combo either nope. time, Doa. One time, they, they sort of botch it. The second time, you already saw Fade in there swinging the hammer to pick up three of those kills. And 
The self-destruct ends up being gratuitous, but might as well end it flashy, Doa, okay. considering you're just closing out the map. You know, finish things off with a bang, and that's exactly what they did. Valiant 3-0 in this series. One more map to play here. The map points will become important later in the season, especially in the middle of the pack like Fusion is here, but that's a big one for Valiant, man. Again, after that shaky last week, they came back and really showed that they are not going anywhere. They are still a playoff contender. This series is uh, great. I'm kind of sad we aren't going to get five maps here. Yeah, me too. And that's a play from Agilities that we typically see from Shadowburn, the air-to-air -air kills, but he shows up. That's right. We'll be back with map four right after this. Ready, ready? I'm ready. I'm one, ready. One, let's one. go, let's go, let's go, 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 the official PC and display of the Overwatch League. And by Intel, the official computer processor of the Overwatch League. Hey guys, this is Zoe, welcome back. Now, 
due to an upper body injury. We saw Verbo being swapped in for Unko. So during halftime, I took the time to talk to Coach Cuddles about that, who told me that they knew about this earlier this week. So they did have two or three days to practice with Verbo. However, he also said that, you know, Verbo has been part of this team ever since the get-go, right? So he's been there in scrims, he's been practicing with the guys, and he's been working really closely with Karif as well as Unko. He knows exactly what he needs to do. He knows exactly where to go. So they weren't too worried. They didn't really have to adjust any of their strats. And so far, it looked pretty good. Cuddles is happy with him, and I have to say, it looked absolutely seamless, the transition from Werbo uh, to Unko, or rather the other way around. So let's see if they can keep it up, or if the Fusion can bring it back in map number four. So give it up for our casters to, uh, you know, bring you all the action once again. Thank you, Zoe. We're here to bring you all the action. We've already brought you 75% of the action in this <laughs> So now we're gonna move from only 76 20, to 100. That's right, there's only 25% more action <laughs> remaining, but it will be good. And it's important for Valiant, they may have won this series already by winning three maps in this set, but map score is important to them as well because they are still behind in game score to the Houston Outlaws, so that 4-0 would really do them a lot of good. Yeah, it is the matches that wins that matter most, but with Houston being on such a tear recently, uh, as we head into the later parts of stage number one, these map differentials can be important, and this should be taken very seriously by the Valiant, I'm who sure did will be. drop Dorado to the Florida Mayhem in a rather sloppy map last time we saw them play this. So yeah. I hope they tighten it up a little bit here and see if they can go ahead and take the clean sweep over Philadelphia. And it's interesting to see Verbo playing like we, uh, like Zoe was talking about, and I agree with the desk that it hasn't been Verbo's issues with the Valkyrie, it has been his teammates running in and dying and then him having to clean up the mess. Yep. Well, I, you know, the thing is, is I don't think the Valiant have missed a beat by having Verbo in here. He's played great today, and he's gotten them this win now over the Philadelphia Fusion already, and we'll see if he can deliver them a, a clean 4-0 here on Dorado. Philadelphia, of course, still with a lot to play for, too. Map score is important for them, but it's going to be tough now that they're going to uh, drop down a game below Valiant. Overall, they're going to be 4-3, and three, whereas Valiant will be 5-2 and two after today. Yeah, it's a good signs for the Valiant. There's still a chance now that some of our top three teams, all of them, in fact, have been defeated for yeah. Valiant to go ahead and qualify for the stage one of the playoffs. Cheer <laughs> for soon. Uh, he's had a, he's he's had a tour of your dancing. That's right. It, it looked rough in the beginning on yeah, Bonnie yeah. for soon. He was certainly uh, losing a lot of those duels to Carpe and yeah, Shadowburn, but he really brought it back. And it's not just the dueling, right? I mean, he did okay there, but it's sneaking those points, getting those couple extra meters on the payload, stealing the point on Oasis last map. It doesn't that matter how many map. times you die, though, if you're winning the objective battle, so. That's right. One. Absolutely. Valiant on the attack one more time. Let's see what they can do. Kareem on the Widowmaker. Will he stick with it? He's played a lot of Widow in the past, so he may stay for a while. We'll be a, find a couple picks. A triple DPS look here. Yeah. I like it. Kareem going to swap right. off immediately. So just a couple of shots to see if they can get the initial kill. Oh, Shadowburn. Right Shadowburn. A little bit low, soon finds that kill there. And can they get to him to res him? I don't know, he's in a little bit of an awkward spot. Looks like Neptuno can reach him in the end. Agility falls, so the counter dive coming oh. in for Billy. Working out okay, but now Shadowburn a little bit of trouble again. And Valiant will be able to keep pushing forward. Uh, Neptuno just glided smoothly wow. into the waiting pulse pistols of Soon. I, you know, I guess he was on the uh, far flank. He definitely did not want to dash in that direction. A little bit cool to start up today, but now he is red hot on that Fraser man. Another oh, one man. finds Boombox. Oh, oh is that nice. a kill to Frankie? Getting close. A lot of damage anyway. Lots of damage, oh. but does end up falling on the side to Shadowburn and Fraggy. However, yep. One Payload last has effort. been delayed. It is going to give an opportunity, however, for the Fusion to defend six versus five. Uh, Verbo kind of left on his own there. Shadowburn finding an easy kill, but Envy getting a little bit of revenge on the Cyber Ninja. Agility saws that Dragon Blade. Don't think they're going to need it here for point A. Uh, Boombox falling here. Eventually. No, Fusion is all over that Payload at the moment. Oh, Dragon Blade. This is bold. Very bold for Agilities. They get it. 
They get, get the it. point. Yeah, they chase off them too, though. Wow. Not only him, Shadowburn, and Fraggy left alive. Fraggy uses the Primal Rage pretty late. I was gonna say. And now has to use it just to jump back towards his team's spawn. As you'd think they would have been able to delay that a little bit longer. Yeah, you, you would think so, but... Huh. Well, they uh, used a lot of ults there that they probably would have liked to have held on to. Yeah, That's going to give Valiant some opportunities now to push this payload pretty far along and through the streets phase oh, of Colorado. Pulse Bomb, no kills out of that one. That was close, though. At least for the Fusion, they have taken control of the high ground. Fusion diving down. They've still got the support up on the high ground. Neptuno trying to get away, getting a little bit low here. Has to exit the high ground. Kareem does fall, though. Verbal brings him back one more time. Nice reflect from Agilities. Getting Raggy out of that. We're on these uh, escort and hybrid maps we've seen. And sometimes we haven't seen any. Oh, that is accurate. Yep. Playing right. the back lines. And sometimes that results in the death of his support. It's not going to be punished, though, because Verbo did have the Valkyrie advantage. So he could bring Kareev back up. But Valiant have struggled today a bit with keeping their support line alive. Sure enough. Okay. Oh, Kareev finds the headshot on a carpe. That's rough, man. Get the res. Brings him back up. Soon down. Trade a tracer for a tracer. And Envy avoids that self destruct. They can't get Hotpa out. There's going to be Boombox popping that transcendence. Meanwhile, Kareev going deep with his own Zenyatta ultimate as Agility's trying to find some kills on the outside of the fight here. And he will with a little bit of help from Fate. In trouble now. And he's down. They got Fraggy, though. So Valiant still coming out ahead in this fight. Yeah, they got enough Time. kills thanks to the Dragon Blade. Yep. But they will push it through point B. So a blazing fast tie for the Valiant. Four minutes and 20 seconds now to move through the end part of this map. And a lot of ultimates too. Agility is actually swapping over to the Doom Fist for this point C attack. I was going to say, oh, there we go. Back on yes. Genji again. I was about to be a little bit surprised if you stuck with that. He had just used the Dragon Blade, so it doesn't really do much no. to reset his old charge. I think he was just making sure that he could swap over to it if it looked like they were going to have to grind out an attack right at the end of point B. You know, that's where you say, you know, hey, we've got the ult advantage to stay on the Genji. Play this one out safe. We've got the time. We've got the edge. Can play it methodically. That's right. No need to hurry up here. Yep. All right, that's a stick on the Hotba. Can he get the D-Mech? Defense Matrix trying to save him. Hotba, I believe, still does get popped out. Yeah, he does. And soon recalls to safety. Fate comes in for the kill. Payload moving. Shadowburn is still trying to get into the mix right now, but supports are dying on the side of the fusion. Neptuno may have to use the Valkyrie pretty soon. Ah, oh, Verbo got caught here. So Valiant without the Mercy. Fraggy drops on the Philadelphia Fusion side. That payload's still moving, so they won the fight hard enough that they were able to keep pushing it for a little bit. Can they maintain it until Verbo gets back with that Valkyrie? Yeah, they tried to... Fusion actually went back to their spawn to regroup his six, but that did give up that movement on the payload. However, now the Valiant have to wait for their own response to come in before they can make a more dedicated attack. Should get there soon. On the high ground now. Fate's got the Discord Orb, so he needs to be a little bit careful here. As he drops back down to the payload. He's got the Primal Rage, though, so he's going to be in pretty good shape here. Grieve has to be that big front line. Grieve is actually very separated Ooh. right now. He needs to be careful. Shadowburn dies. Didn't get the Dragon Blade out. Gets rezzed again. We'll see what he can do here. Fate over top. Lands onto Frankie. There's a kill right into the Primal Rage. Keeping everybody bottled back on Philadelphia Fusion. Trying to keep Boombox off the payload. Hotpa finds Envy with that self-destruct now. And Fate gets those heals just in the nick of time to stay alive. They're still going to try to grind this one out again. They have a player advantage. They're starting to get these kills. Agility wants to close it with the blade. I uh, got Hotpa, but not really anything else. Kareem, though, finding the kill on Fraggy. So Valiant still with a man advantage once more as the payload moves forward. Can they get to it? Shadowburn is there. Eliminated. Now Carpe. Can he delay it long enough for the tanks to arrive again? Neptuno couldn't get back because of the pulse bomb. Hotpa defects immediately, and that is it. It is going to be a minute 52 in the time bank for Valiant. Another really strong offensive round for this team. Indeed, and it looked rather effortless at the end. Yep, and uh, let's take a listen in on Valiant uh, towards the end of that round.
Just go, just go, just go. I have no, I have no, no, no. Okay, 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 it's all about Same. killing monkeys and babies, uh, from what I can oh, wow. tell. Wow, that's, that's horrifying. <laughs> Focusing down on the, the little diva. Yeah, pilot diva. Pilot diva without the uh, the protection of her suit, an easy target. And yep. Valiant will use that to go ahead and push all the way on through. Does that mean the diva suit gives birth to diva? <laughs> I, guess that, I guess that's what that means. That's no, what, that's uh, sounds like you could have some interesting skin ideas. <laughs> <laughs> well, it just brings up the age-old question, which came first, the diva or the diva man? You know? Hard to tell. Only the South Korean government knows. <laughs> Which came first? Yeah, that's true. That's right. And they're, uh, it's a closely guarded secret, I think. <laughs> I, I, I think so. We haven't learned yet. <laughs> well, glum faces on the Philadelphia Fusion side of things. As, you know, again, they find themselves with uh, quite the mountain to climb on the offensive round here. Doesn't they, look uh, like they're going to be doing anything terribly innovative either. Doesn't look that way. With the nope. dive once again. Now they. They have played Widow on defense on this map, but the standard stuff on attack, and cool. while Agilities and Soon will be playing the Junk Grab Widow combination. Yeah. Trying to control the choke points, and Soon's uh, gonna be shooting from the side there, as you can see. They know where he is right now, so. Well, Agilities was nearly picked off almost immediately, but managed to barely live through that one. Here comes the dive, Fate jumping in on top. He's got the shield, they're gonna go in on him pretty hard though. He's in trouble, has to get out. Yeah, that was actually nearly a mistake there yeah. by, by the Valiant. Soon had to grapple very close to the choke point to try and save that. Uh, Fate really needed to back off and try and redefend in this choke point rather than attempting to delay that payload. There's no way with this composition you're gonna be able to fight right there once you've been dispositioned at the start of the match. It did seem like everybody was a little bit not on the same page. Harper is creeping down. around the back. He wants to get a kill on a Kareem right now. He go, he's going to succeed, actually. Wow, yeah, managed to uh, flank. Get the kill on the support. Now Shadowburn trying to do his best to keep Valiant pushed back again. Oh, that's a big one to dash into. A lot of damage here. Frankie taken out, though. And kills on both sides here, but it looks like Shadowburn is picking off enough members of Valiant. I mean, the Valiant have no supports a. right now. Yeah, that's it. They have to wait for Kareem to get back, so Fusion successfully attacking that support line again. Kareev goes down to Carpe, and then Shadowbird and Carpe were both swarming the backside of the map to make sure that Verbo wasn't going to have that chance for a resurrection and pick him off as well. Yeah. Well, good job capitalizing on the openings they saw, taking out those supports. Philadelphia pushing forward here. They can't quite claim the high ground, but they've got time. And we'll see what the Jillies can do with the strip tire. There's a kill in the shadow run. Okay. So both DPS out of the way. Philadelphia's gonna have to back away and regroup with this one. I'm yes, they will. So quick kills on the some of the frontline divers from the fusion, but they're still gonna be walking back with six ultimates. They will not be able to control the high ground. We'll see how they want to engage this. Carpe is trying for a long flank right now. Around the back side of the courthouse. That's right. Shadowburn would love to get up on the high ground. Oh, they knew he was there. Nice concussion mind to push it back again. Grieve in a lot of trouble here. Carpe looking for what could be an easy kill. Nope. Doesn't plan the pulse bomb, though. That stick would have been really nice for Philadelphia. Meanwhile, that payload is not moved. As the tanks from Valiant were on it, soon does fall. Maybe a chance now. Shadowburn, I think he reflected a concussion mind there. Nobody wanting to commit ultimates, the big ones to this fight, Doa. Yeah. Neptuno just uses his Resurrect without having to use the Valkyrie to get the necessary man advantage. All right, Agilities. Oh, he finds Shadowburn again with the Riptire. That's been the target that he's been looking for here. Neptuno pops that Valkyrie. Can he get to there for some reses? Brings Fraggy back up again. He's low, though, trying to get to Shadowburn. Meanwhile, Hotba back, trying to handle the tanks. On the back line, but no, they're going to get pushed back. I really don't know about that Valkyrie. That Valkyrie no. came way too late. There were yeah. too many people already dead on the fusion. The and push had been stymied. You couldn't get to him I safely. And when he went all the way into the mob of Valiant members, just found himself dying during the Valkyrie. 
Yeah, you know, the thing is, is that is one thing that I think Philadelphia has relied on a little bit too much this uh, this stage so far is Neptuno comes in and with those instant reses on the Valkyrie, it saves a lot of fights. I do wonder when we get to stage two and the mercy changes, you know, are in, how this team is going to be affected by that because they really are relying a lot of times on Neptuno to save the day. They have had a little bit of issues, I, I will say, without that resurrection available. And yeah. It's going to be a major change for all of these teams. Tough to keep Fraggy in and otherwise. Oh, Hotba. Oh, Hotba. <laughs> Gets two with that self-destruct. I mean, agility is, of course, the resurrections are coming in, though. Verbo does not let the pick stick. But fate does go down right afterwards, and no more reses for Valiant, so they are without their Winston. And that means Philadelphia is going to get this payload moving. Now, fate dying during his primal rage while his Percy was distracted trying to resurrect his teammates. It's going to cost them that fight. It's going to cost them this push, in fact. Agility's going to Here we go again. get another big pickoff, but the Rip Tire is already being targeted. <laughs> Envy and Vader stalling the payload right now. Tire just spelunking around the outside of the buildings, and it comes in for a kill on the Boombox. Who's the one with the trance? Yep, that's right. He had the support ultimate on the Philadelphia Fusion side. Neptuno has his now, but Valiant burning their Zenyatta ult to try to stay in this one. Philadelphia still pushing forward here. Fraggy back to life again. Shadow Burn, there's a Dragon Blade. Can he find Verbo looking for him? Gets the kill on the Fate anyway. Looking around, more kills. Can't find the one on the soon. Not the most successful Dragon Blade, but it was a successful push. That's point B. Yeah, this Dragon Blade getting the tanks out of the way, though, daring the supports and the DPS of the Valiant to come and try and contest that payload. They decide they'd rather go ahead and try and defend here on point C. They're going to be feeling comfortable. It will be hard, if not nearly impossible, for the Fusion to reach the same amount of time bank as the Valiant unless they roll unopposed through this point. Yeah, they need to snowball this one, and they need to do it quickly. They kind of just get in there and get those kills. Hot buff. They're going to rely on a lot of uh, a lot of kills from the self-destruct, maybe. So you need to do over the top. They've got Valiant pushed back here. Verbo did die early. Now Kareev, so no support for Valiant. This payload could move as soon as the tanks are cleared out. Oh, Hotba stuck. I think he absorbed it, though. Yeah, he did. I think he ate that one. Yeah, it looked like he did. In the meantime, again, the Valiant trying to play more defensively against the dive. That time, oh, everybody my. moving way back into the back lines to deal with Carpe and Shadowburn. They were successful in that attempt, and now they should be looking to stabilize here. Well, Valiant already secured my themselves a better time in the time bank now as Philadelphia Fusion drops below a minute 52 remaining. They still want to finish. They've got a lot of ultimates to do it with. Trying to find those sick picks for Carpe. Pulse bomb at the ready. And I don't know, they just, uh, they're pushing it, but Valiant coming in now, it's gonna be tough. It's like a stone wall. Boombox is gone. falling immediately. It's like a stone wall that falls on top of you. It's more like it. Boombox back up again. There goes Envy, so maybe Fusion can bounce back from this one. A couple kills coming in. Now, Burbo's holding on to his Valkyrie. Doesn't want to put himself in harm's way. Knows that the respawns will be happening. They can give up all the room on the payload right now. So go ahead and use it later. And oh, that's what he's gonna do. Dragon Blade from on high. Agility's coming down, looking for those kills. Can't find any though. Pushed away. But he can't get the transcendence, and they can kill the box right afterwards. Yep. Great play by the Valiant. Back off. Go ahead and wait for the respawns. Don't try and take the risky Valkyrie where you have to dive deep to get your res or to get the resurrects. Instead, wait for everybody to come back. It doesn't matter how much movement you give on the payload as long as it doesn't hit the end. That's right. 30 seconds remaining. This next attack for Philadelphia Fusion is almost certainly going to be their last. And it's going to be so hard. The stall ults, the self-destruct, the primal rage are there for the Valiant. Yeah, if they finish it, it's going to have to be an overtime. There's no way they can get it there with any time in the time bank left. No. Not with those ults available. The tank ults, very good at just drawing more time off the clock, drawing more time for respawns. Carpe versus Soon. One more time in this matchup. Carpe goes for it. Soon doesn't drop, though. Agilities does. And Philadelphia Fusion fighting with a man advantage here. We'll see if maybe Verbo can res him. No, no Valkyrie, but Neptuno has one. Trying to keep everybody healed up here. Shadowburn taken down. And be with a big self-destruct kill to eliminate that DPS. Neptuno gets to him, though, of course, with that res. Soon comes in. Pulse Bomb doesn't connect, though. No kills at that one. And Valiant pushed back. Soon with 11 HP. He needs a bit of healing here. 
Yeah, they're all trouble. they're all over the payload though, Doa. Virgo yep. is going to get his Valkyrie. Maggie, he's down agilities. Three dashes, three kills. That Dragon Blade helping out tremendously. And that is going to be Valiant. Putting the period on the end of this sentence. I don't know if Fusion can hold on to this much longer than Boombox's Transcendence lasts. And that will be it. a 4-0 for the LA Valiant. And I don't think any of us would have predicted a 4-0 for the Valiant. I don't think so. Today. No. I mean, I thought we were thinking this one was going to be close any way you slice it. Fusion no doubt put up a fight, but the Valiant looking very, very good in this series. Yeah, it seemed like the as good of a show as the Fusion put on to start this series. Yeah. They sort of mentally ran out of energy by the end because it was all Valiant basically in the second half. Absolutely, man. I mean, it, it started out a little bit slow on that first round of Nimbani, but it seemed like after that, Valiant getting it together, bringing in Verbo, he performs great. Big win for LA Valiant, and really still uh, keeps him alive in the playoff hunt. Absolutely, it does. They're going to need a lot more than that. A couple upsets going their way, a couple more big wins, and the Valiant could be in the conversation. Uh, we wanted the best. Great start for the day here on Overwatch League. We'll be back with a lot more right after this. The Overwatch League is brought to you by T-Mobile, America's best unlimited network. Omened by HP, the official PC and display of the Overwatch League. And by Intel, the official computer processor of the Overwatch League. Welcome back, everybody. Our first match of the day is officially over, and it's the Valiant walking away with the win, and not just a win, a 4-0 sweep. We're going to start our post-game discussion with Bren here 
And Bren, before this matchup, said that it was going to be Philly walking away with the victory today. One of the teams advancing to five and two. Bren, you got zero games correct in your prediction. Let's talk <laughs> about what went wrong for Philly in the second half. I'm angry. I'm annoyed, right? First of all, we're going to get out there, Philadelphia. I'm, I'm kind of annoyed at how they've been playing because, uh, yes, I could see what they were going for. They didn't sub in Poco for various reasons because they wanted to play a more slow-paced game style, uh, but that didn't work at all, right? Half time, that's when you sub in Poco. That's when you switch back to what you're comfortable with. Having Hopper playing does not really enable your DPS duo of Carpe and Shadowburn. They can't play as aggressively as they used to. They have to start playing a bit more passive. You know, Shadowburn was pretty much trying to keep Soon in check for the majority of the game on his Genji and a lot of these maps on the Barney in particular on, on map number one. But I mean, some of these highlights that we can see here as well, it started off okay. They got the first cap initially. Shadowburn was turning up on the Farah, but it's that individual play that gets shut down when you start to play a bit this more of a passive crazy. game style. This is crazy as well. Soon with the back cap, the guy is definitely the sneakiest tracer in the whole of the Overwatch League. The amount of times he's been able to do this and he had that back cap with the payload on Numbani against Dallas Fuel and then he's just able to reverse the whole of this stage for, what, for Los Angeles. What's crazy to me is how does a team like uh, Philadelphia Fusion that took a match away from New York Excelsior the strongest team in the league right now, currently. Arguably. Okay. Argue, I'm going to argue that point, Saichi. I'm going to argue all the way to the moon, mate. Trust me. Listen, how do they lose now to a severely weakened Valiant? And it, it, for me, it's just it, so many question marks, and I'm so disappointed. Yeah, it's it's not what we expected, and we talked a little well, bit about the play style issues. Saicho <laughs> got it right, though. You called this from the beginning. As we take a look at some of the highlights from Game 4, who impressed you from the Valiant today? Why did they walk away with not just the victory, but all four maps? So I think Philadelphia Fusion played themselves because they know that Soon is such an incredible tracer that they have to shut him down. And normally Carpe and Shadowburn are really good at being able to do this. And we saw Numbani Carpe getting the better end of it. But because they're focused so much on Soon, I think agilities and the tank line went enormous for the Valiant. They just stuck to their own game. And they're fine if Soon gets shut down a little bit because he's still creating so much space for them. Because Philadelphia Fusion, that was basically all they were focused on. And so a Valiant are then just able to play, control the tempo of the game completely, ramp it up. They had a little bit, they looked a little weaker on Dorado perhaps, but that's always been a bit of a question mark map for them. So overall, Valiant had a really good showing today, especially when we had the question mark of how is Verbo going to perform. I think Valiant are right back up there as one of the top teams. So let's speak a little bit about that. Today, we didn't have... Unko in the lineup. Kareev showed us his Zenyatta previously, but most of the time he was playing on Mercy. How do you think the Valiant played overall? This is one of the deeper rosters in the league. Did they sub out the way you expected? Yes, because if Unko isn't able to play, um, then they have to sub in Verbo, and Verbo's not really a Zen player. So you want that kind of star power on your Zenyatta player, I think. So that was expected from that angle. What wasn't expected for me, actually, was that their support ultimates if anything, looked a little bit better than they did when Unko yeah. was in the lineup. Now, I don't think that that's anything against Unko. I think that's probably because as this uh, team continues to develop with Unko or Verbo in the Mercy slot, they've got more accustomed to that and they have better plans of how they want to use things. So overall, the growth is still them having good ultimate usage rather than this question mark. Solid job by Verbo, his first time in a regular season matchup playing all four maps and he gets all four victories. A fantastic start for the support player, but our player of the match sponsored by Omen by HP. It's a DPS once again, and no, it's not Silk Thread. It's his counterpart, Agilities, who got it done on multiple heroes. Yeah, this guy played not just the Genji, but also the Junkrat, as you can see here. He had a ridiculous performance throughout the entire game. And this is what you were, it kind of ties into what you were saying earlier, Saichu, actually, with the fact that when you put so much emphasis on shutting down soon, it just allows your other DPS player to turn up, and that's exactly what Agility did. He's that double threat of DPS player. As soon as you shut down soon, he's just going to start having a ridiculous performance, hitting all sorts of crazy shots, you can see. But he had a super uh, impressive performance, not just on the Genji, not just on the Junkrat, but also the Roadhog as well on University. He had 73% hook accuracy, which is about 20% higher than what you normally see. So he's having a, a crazy performance across the board. Sideshow, coming into today's matchup, I was wondering, you know, how much Silk Threat are we going to see? He's been so good in control, those map threes. After watching Agility's performance, if you're the management, if you're the coach of the Valiant, 
Which one of these stars do you put on each map? I think it's it's very map dependent between the two of them. So Agility plays the Roadhog. So anytime, like on Oasis, on the University, anytime you want to run the Roadhog, Quad Tank, you sub Agility's in. If you want to increase the tempo of the game, you sub Agility's in because he's so aggressive on his Genji. But for Ilios, where they want to run this Widowmaker Tracer, Silk Thread's Tracer is way better than Agility. So they did each have these, uh, and for the Soldier on Numbani as well. So it's quite nice, actually, how they've each got fairly complementary uh, hero pools that can go alongside soon and give them a different flavor. All right, well, I want to give a big shout out to all the LA Valiant fans in the crowd who are making noise here in that first matchup. You got a big win today, and not only was it a match one, you won all four maps. So if there's a tiebreaker at the end of stage one, that map count is going to have a huge impact on helping you get into those top three and playing for the $125,000 performance bonuses up for grabs. That's going to do it for our first match of the day. On the other side of the break, we got a big one coming up. It's the Gladiators versus the Mayhem. Don't go anywhere.